Tonight's program is going to be super data heavy. You've been warned in advance. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be one of those programs here where tonight you're going to want to go ahead and document this as I did last year. You're going to want to go ahead and document this because we got a lot that we are going to need to cover here and we are going to be updating your files. Join me and I will complete your training. All right. First of all, let's go ahead and get you up to date here. Now, some of the things I'll show you here tonight, because the information does come from different sources, you might see some variation in some of these things here. But the first thing I want us to show here is salary and age by gender in the U.S. Because in order for us to have this discussion tonight, we got to go ahead and go ahead and clarify exactly what we're referring to and what the ground rules are as far as what we're discussing. So let's go ahead and take a look at that first and foremost here. This is from Forbes from just a couple of months ago here. Salary and gender in the U.S. by Asian gender in the U.S. The source is the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics here, and I've talked about this before, you see something here. You can see here where 16 to 19 years old, females, median wage, annual wages, median is 31,000. For males, is 32,000. All right. Females between the ages of 20 and 24, their median annual wage is 36,000. For males, it's 40,000. Then you see from 25 to 34 years old. Oh man, that's where things start to break away and then it doesn't look back. Females making 50, median annual wage is 50,000. Males is 56,000. 35 to 44 years old. Now, as I've taught you over the past decade or so, now we're entering the prime earning years. This is where you need to prioritize where you're going to be. Are you going to be invested in a job? Are you going to be invested in a family? Are you going to be invested in yourself? This is where the rubber meets the road. And remember, by the time we get to our mid 30s, this is where the males of the society start breaking away. This is where the guys start looking at it and they're going to reach their prime earning potential. So they're either going to take off or they're going to crash. And as you can see here, once you enter your mid thirties is men versus women. The women are making median wages of 57,000, but the men are making over 69,000. So this isn't something you can wait to do in your 50s or 60s. As a man, if it's going to pop for you and if it's going to take off for you, those mid-30s, that's when fellas get serious and recognize, ain't nobody going to do nothing for me. I got to do it for myself. And there's a certain way in which I want to live my life. So it's in their 30s that they make the final decision of what type of life they are going to live. Let me say it again. When males meet their mid-30s, that's when he makes a permanent decision final decision about what type of life he's going to live. That's what he's going to do. Next, you're looking for 45 to 54 years old. For women, the median wages are 57,000. For men, it's 72,000. Now take a look at the next one. 55 and 64 years old, the median is 54,000 for women, but 72,000 for men. So let me get this straight. Once we reach about our 50s, the women start falling back. They start falling off. The women start falling off. So in other words, the women were competitive in their early 20s. They were competitive. And then once they hit their late 20s or 30s, that's it. The men turn into the workhorses and they break out. By the way, when I open up the phone lines here, uh, Lil Doctrine and everybody here who has questions about that, uh, about those things right there. I'll have them call in. I 
our truth we're going to have you call in when the phone lines open so i want you all to make sure you get their information when i open up the phone lines in zoom for the folks who have those kind of questions by the way i'll make sure we get them also very very important that we do that very very important that we do that now there's a reason why i'm including that because this is my program tonight but by the way they will be required so make sure you keep their uh for anybody who asks questions like that or says things like that, they would like to host my program for me or assist me in hosting it, that's perfectly fine. Make sure you keep their uh, the addresses for their page. And Lil Doctrine, since he sounds like he'll, no sir, I'll decide what you need to do. So Lil Doctrine can, is gonna take the rest of his life off. Y'all gotta understand, there's a lot of failed fellas here and this a program like this hits them in their guts. A program like this hurts them because he's the below average male that never got it in the gear. And he feels bad because the fellas here, I know the fellas are kind of upset because I've been spending a lot of time focusing on the guys lately. Well, yeah, that's because if you're going to lead, you have to have an accurate assessment of where you are in the bigger picture. You can't just sit here like some Neanderthal looking at your crusty toenails. You're going to have to see where you stack up in the bigger picture. And when you start hearing that you're not competitive or that you don't measure up, then you start getting upset and sensitive. What are you going to do? Ain't them white men you talking about? So just understand, hit dogs don't just holler, they squeal. So for those fellows, our truth make sure you got their profile page information. If they don't call up, they'll be banned. Not because we're mean, but because we need to be focused. And if you are really our truth, that's even better. If you're not a man, you definitely must call up. So very glad you said that. If you're not a man, you have now you have to call up. All right. As you can see on your screen here, once we hit the age of our mid 40s, then that launch pad that we built for ourselves in our mid 30s, that launch pad starts paying off dividends. Not only that, but can we just be honest? The women just run out of steam, man. All those accumulated years of trying to pretend that you can be a workhorse, they collapse under the strain. They run they run out of steam. She can keep it up for a good five years, but she can't keep it up for 20 You can't keep it up for 20. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. She's not going to be able to hang in there for 20, 25, 30 more years. So what she's going to be looking for is the man to compensate for that. That's not going to be optional. She's going to have to have that. Because you see... It goes even further than that. A lot of you ask about yearly earnings. A lot of you ask about salary. But there's a question that most of you don't ask about. And more of you should. What are the lifetime earnings for Americans? Because you see, if you're going to make a 30 year commitment to a house. Well, that's going to occupy practically all of your working years. So in other words, that's going to be a whole chunk of your lifetime earnings. So we need to find out, well, not just how much I make in a year, how much do we make in our lifetimes? Well, I got the numbers for those two. Got the numbers for that too. As you can see on your screen here, It shows that how much did the average American make in a lifetime? The answer varies by industry, education level, gender, and location. The typical lifetime gross income range for American males is 1.13 million to 3.05 million. So 1,130,000 to 3,050,000. And 510,000 to 1,860,000 
for women, according to the Social Security Administration. According to the Social Security Administration. Now, by the way, there are some ADHD lead pipe babies in the chat room. There's a reason why I'm not, why we're not going into race about it. Some of you are slow. I get it. Your math isn't your strong suit. Critical thinking isn't your strong suit. I understand that. So that's why we're having this program discussion tonight. For some of you, the critical thinking is not your strong suit. So you, st- you, you go off into the area in which you're most comfortable, which is ADHD. I get it. But what I'm saying is just hold your horses. We'll do the Sesame Street music for you in a minute because you should really be embarrassed to keep saying that. You should be embarrassed. You're not, but you should be. Jason taking cheap shots. No, I'm not. This is educating because if you're not, if you're ignorant and don't understand how ignorant you are, well, somebody needs to advise you what the problem is. Next thing we're going to go into here. Now, here's where you all really need to update your files. Here's where you really need to update your files because I'm bringing you government sources, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the Social Security Administration, Social Security Administration knows what everybody is making. So you see, that's why I like that one as a source because they're not guessing what you're making. They know what you're making because they're the ones who decide what you get for Social Security. Remember, Social Security caps out at a certain income. So yeah, they have all of the income information in case nobody told you. They have all of that for everyone. So for all the, what about the race people? I understand your mama in the section eight houses. You trying to catch up with that third grade degree. I get it. Calm down. You'll learn something strictly by accident. I imagine this is time for you all to update your files because the mathematics have changed. The mathematics have changed. We used to say that a hundred thousand dollars a year was the top 10%. However, we're now getting new data that's coming in since the pandemic in 2020. And now you're looking at a number that is closer to 17% to 20%, depending on what sources you're looking at, 17% to 20% make $100,000 a year or more. Now, as you know, we've had a gross period of inflation and a number of other things going on. So a lot has changed here in the last five, six years as the numbers are being updated. So the top 10% is no longer $100,000 a year. That top 10%, that top to make six figures now has now been expanded or should we say diluted to around the top 17 to 20%. That used to be the 90,000 range, if you'll all remember. 90 to uh, $50,000 range used to be that. Now the game has changed. So you're all going to want to update your files. That includes myself because we've been using that cliche because those are nice round numbers for so long. But I want you to understand where the numbers are really coming from here now. Now on your screen, this is from First Republic. And I'm sorry, on your screen is from Investopedia. Investopedia has this calculated as far as back as 2020. And as you all can see, the top 10% of earners is no longer a hundred thousand. The top 10% is 173. The top, the hundred thousand range is now the top 20%, but that top 10% is no longer a hundred. The top 10% is 173. You might consider this to be a good thing, but it's actually a bad thing. Or should I say it's not as advantageous as you might think. For the top 5%, now that's 342,000. The top 1% is no longer 250 or 500,000. The top 1% is now 823,000. No longer 250 or 500. The top 1% now, you got to be making almost a million dollars a year. Almost. You got to be making more than three quarters of a million dollars a year 
to qualify for the top 1% now. Then you have the top 10th of 1%. To be in the top 10th of 1%, you that's where you have to be a true millionaire. Average wages. Now you have to be a true millionaire to be in the top 10th of 1%. Just wanted to tell you, in the chat room, B1, B1 B1 Supply said 104,000 in San Francisco qualifies for low-income housing. Well, yeah, but then again, come into a place near you, New York City, Los Angeles, hell, D.C., Miami. Come into a place near you. But what I'm saying is to qualify to be in the top 10% now, you have to make $173,000. And if you are already making $300,000 a year, you're no longer in the top 1%. You're now in the top 5%. Jason, why are you going over these numbers like this to make a very, very clear point to all of the, well, what race is that referring to there? And what I'm saying is this refers to everyone. The overall landscape has gotten more competitive. The overall landscape for everyone is more competitive than it was. Because the price of gas doesn't say, and when you get at the gas pump, it doesn't say, now if you white, you got to pay this number right here. But if you black, oh, we'll cut you a break. It doesn't work that way. To the mama's boys, the wick voucher women, the Gerber baby girls, um, it's time for you to grow up. Time for you to grow up. You don't go to a store, a car lot, or anything else that says, now we'll give you a break if your money is funny. If your money ain't been right, we'll give you a break. That's not the way it works. In the immature world, that's the way you operate. In the real world, they didn't ask you that. They didn't ask you what you can afford. They didn't ask you what's comfortable for you. They didn't ask you what's in your best interest. They didn't ask you what you consider to be reasonable. They're telling you, A, these are the numbers. You either qualify or you don't. You can either get this or you can't. And as that number of the top 10%, as that number gets higher, just understand that the definition of luxury goods goes up with it. Now, this is from Hedges. Wanted to show you all something different here. Vehicle ownership by gender for new SUVs. New females are buying 43%. Males are buying 57%. For sedans, females buy 44%, males buy 56%. For new pickup trucks. Now, that one's kind of interesting, isn't it? Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this one. When it comes to new truck buyers, well, the overwhelming majority, 86%, are purchased by males. Females only have 14% and probably either because their man bought it or it was a birthday present, I don't know. But did you notice that? So in other words, the vehicles that are used for work Remember, the Ford F-150 is not just the highest selling pickup truck in America. It is the highest selling vehicle. Ford sells more F-150s than any other manufacturer sells of cars. So the number one selling car in America is not a car. It's a pickup truck, the Ford F-150. For those of you who didn't know, What I'm showing to the ladies here 
is there's a reason for these numbers and the discrepancy you see on your screen. The men are putting in work. The men are concentrating early, not buying a car so they can look cute. Not buying a car that matches their purse, but buying a vehicle that is going to get their entire life where they wanted to. The men on average are willing to sacrifice and do that. Women on average simply are not. And ladies, as much as you might like your Kia Optima or your Nissan Rogue, you're not going to be able to make a million dollars out of your Nissan Altima or your, your Kia Optima or your Nissan Rogue. It'll get you to work and that's going to be about it. I'm showing this to you because I want you to understand that if we're going to discuss who Mr. Average is and what that means now, you got to understand where that comes from. I want you to take a look at these numbers here again. The top 10% has to make 173,000. It doesn't matter what your race is. This is what you got to do if you're going to hit that number. And if you want to now be in the top 20%, that needs to be six figures if you're going to get there. But like with so much else in life, there is a poison pill. There's a poison pill in there. As you see more people making six figure incomes, you have to start asking yourself at what expense does that come at? Because that sounds like inflation. Well, it is inflation and something's got to give. In my discussion tonight about the average man, I have to put this in its proper context of where the men are. As you can see from this report here from January of this year from Forbes magazine, laying some seriously heavy vibes on you. But by the way, single women are more likely to own homes than single men in nearly all States. If you want to know the reason why women are poor, if you want to know one of the major reasons why, it is because a home is not an asset if you live there. A house is not an asset if you live there. Some of you in the chat room are finally connecting some of the dots that I was laying out here earlier. Because you see, now it puts this number into perspective, doesn't it? Well, if you have a lifetime earnings of $510,000, but you went and bought a $250,000 house or a $200,000 house, well, we can see what kind of life you're going to live. I can accurately project for you exactly what type of life you're going to live. And even if you made the $1.86 million a year, even if you're one of those females who made that, well, that's good for the white folks right there. They make that. Well, you know what? If you divide that by 30 years, the average working term for the average American, that breaks down to $62,000 a year. $62,000 a year is what you make if you have a lifetime earnings of $1.86 million. $62,000 a year. What I'm saying is that's hardly baller money is what I'm trying to tell you. We don't have to splice that one by race. We don't have to do that. I don't care who you are or where you are. That ain't baller money. Some of the crack pie babies, I understand. Is in, you, you, you in West Philadelphia or Baltimore or whatever. No diss and no, no shade. I just thought you would like to know 62000 is actually not baller money. It really isn't. It's really not. It's really not. Those are just some of the numbers. But I wanted to put that lifetime earnings number into its proper perspective for you 
when I start talking to you about this next part. By the way, it says Louisiana, my state, has the highest share of homes owned by single women. You do understand what that means because Louisiana is also, it usually is trading places with Mississippi and Arkansas for being the poorest state in the union. So if Louisiana has more women, more single women who own their homes, it ain't because the single women are killing the game and balling out. It's not because of that. The article says single women who live by themselves, now that doesn't, does that include single mothers, are more likely to own a home than single men in 48 of 50 states, according to new analysis by LendingTree. The online lending marketplace looked at data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics and found that while women earn 83.1 cents for every dollar a man makes, women own about 2.46 million more homes than single men. Single women own about 10,760,000 homes, while single men own about 8,120,000. Put another way, single women on average own an average of 12.9% of the owner-occupied homes in the 50 states versus 10.6%, among single men. Louisiana has the highest share of homes owned by single women. 15.6% of Louisiana owner occupied households are owned by single women, more than two percentage points higher than the 50 state average. Oh, don't worry, it gets worse. North Dakota and South Dakota are the only states where single men own a higher share of homes than single women. Florida has the largest gap in home ownership rates among single women and single men. The gap is 4.55%, nearly two percentage points higher than the national average of 2.84. People, they're telling you that women in Florida, single women in Florida own 4.5% more homes than the men in Florida. Rather than patting yourself on the back and congratulating the women of Florida, perhaps you should be asking a different question. What is it that the men of Florida know that the women of Florida ain't picked up on yet? Now, that would be a better question to ask. Because once again, when you take a look at lifetime earnings... Yeah, when you look at lifetime earnings and salary, the real question is maybe the men know something that the women haven't picked up on. If you all agree that maybe there's something that the men know that the women haven't picked up on, give me the thumbs up emoji in the chat room and hit the likes button. It's over 2,000 people in here watching live right now. And I want you to let people know that you like what you're hearing on tonight's program. Since we are a shadow band, some of you didn't even get your notifications, but we want to let people know that you like what you're hearing on tonight's program. This isn't a bunch of folks sitting around yelling at each other about their flavor of thong that they're wearing and what strip club they just fell out of with an STD. We're the grown folks over here. That's why we're discussing numbers. It's 20 minutes later and we're still discussing the numbers. But if this is too dry for everyone, I'll go ahead and wrap this up in a minute. I've been doing a lot of traveling here, so it suits me just fine either way. But what I'm showing you here is that in Florida that we all know is skyrocketing in values, uh, being overpriced, the insurance, the homeowner insurance rates are so far, are so bad in Florida right now that basically you have an insurance company pulling out every month in the state. They just got hit by another hurricane. And now you're going to see basically what's going to happen is all the, all the private insurance companies are going to leave the state of Florida and the state is going to have to be its own insurer. That's the only way you're going to move forward. Either that or insurance rates in Florida are going to have to double from what they currently are. That's the only way you can move forward. Coverage is going to have to be slashed and 
the rates that they charge you are going to have to double from what they currently are. Did you all know that there are folks in Florida paying $1,000, $2,000 a month for their insurance? Not on the beach front either. Not on the beach front. Not on the beach front. You got folks paying thousands a year on homes that they own, by the way. The home is paid off, but they're paying thousands a year. My folks in Florida, my people who work in insurance in Florida know I'm telling the truth. They know I'm telling the truth. Because what's happening is as the insurance companies pull out, there are fewer insurers left. The When the new insurers take over, they don't really just take over. When you go to them for insurance, they tell you, oh, there's fewer insurance companies. We got to raise our rates because we're absorbing more risk. So we got to raise our rates. And so it becomes this vicious cycle. Who is Mr. Average? Who is Mr. Average? Do they even understand what average is now? Want to take you a little bit further here so you can see this. Women are declining, are a declining majority of homeowners. In 2022, single women owned about 58% of the nearly 35.2 million homes owned by unmarried Americans, while men, single men owned 42%. Single women owned 58% of the nearly 35.2 million own homes owned by unmarried Americans, while single men owned 42%. In 2000, by comparison, this is from Pew Research, by the way, that contributed to this article in Forbes. In 2000, by comparison, single women owned 64% of the almost 25 million homes owned by unmarried Americans, single men owned 36%. Now they go into some dis, uh, intellectually dishonest stuff here about what's causing that. You go over here to Lending Tree and they talked about how they got their numbers and things like that. I did that because I want you to understand what you're looking at here. I want you to understand some of the things you're looking at. States with the largest share of single, this is from Lending Tree, by the way, who Forbes got the other place they got their numbers from. Lending Tree says number one is Louisiana. Owner occupied households, 1.2 million. Households owned and occupied by single women, 15%. Households owned and occupied by single men, 10%. Louisiana is one of the poorest states in the union. What do the men of Louisiana know and understand that the women don't? What do the men of Louisiana understand that the women don't? Alabama, 14.9% single female, 10.85% single men. South Carolina, 14.84% single women, 10.65% single men. What do the men of Alabama and South Carolina understand? States with the largest share of single men, homeowners, North Dakota, Wyoming, South Dakota, if you want to go out there. States with the widest gender gap in home ownership rates, rates between single homeowners. Florida comes in at number one. 5.7 million owner-occupied households. Households owned and occupied by single women, 14.8%. Households owned and occupied by single men, 10.25%. Gender gap between single homeowners, 4.55%. What do the men of Florida understand that the women don't? What do the men of Florida understand that the women don't? Also about debt in America, from debt.org, interesting article about that as well. You might wanna go check that out if you have time for that. I'm just suggesting it to you here because I want you to understand I'm doing tonight's program about what does it mean to be average? Who is the average man today? I want you to understand something. Let's go back to this thing about the homes. 
I want you to understand this little thing here about the homes. Because this, the average man today is really bullied and bludgeoned and harassed into disadvantageous things. A man is perfectly happy with a bachelor pad and a television. A man is perfectly happy with a one bedroom efficiency apartment and a television. He's straight. It's only when he brings a woman around that all of a sudden what he needs expands. Men are perfectly happy just driving their pickup truck. It's the women who want these exorbitantly more expensive items that are far less utilitarian and are not investments. They will do things that are specifically not investments and then sit there and brag about it. But men don't operate that way when left to their own devices. A man by himself is going to get a one bedroom bachelor pad. A woman wants to buy a big old house so that she can fantasize about hosting Christmas parties with the relatives so she's ready to grossly overpay. She makes less money than the men, yet she wants to go beyond that. She makes less money than the men do, but she wants to go extravagantly beyond that. Then you take a look at their lifetime earnings and you start to realize that's not a good thing. Now, would you all like to know what makes it even more devastating? I can show you numbers that are almost a decade old and it's just as bad. Take a look at this. You take a look at this. Now, this article is from 2016, but I want you to understand this. By the time you get to 2016, which is modern housing standards, the homes are a thousand square feet larger today than they were in 1973, and the living space per person has nearly doubled says here, average slash median house size. In 2015, the average size of new houses built in the U.S. increased to an all-time high of 2,687 square feet. And the median size um, over the last 42 years, the average new new U.S. house has increased in size by more than 1,000 square feet from an average of 1,660 square feet in 1973 to 2,687 square feet last year. Likewise, the median size house has increased in size by almost 1,000 square feet. So the average has increased and the median has increased. So all the lead pipe babies, we want you there right there. The average has increased and the median has increased. The median was 15, 1,525 square feet. It's now 2,467. That was 2016. It really hasn't changed very much since then, but the bottom line is, do you understand? This is what your father had in 1973. His house was a thousand square feet smaller. Your grandmama was sitting in a house a thousand square feet smaller. a thousand square feet smaller. I want you to know if you're going to be the average guy today, we need to make an apples to apples comparison. A thousand square feet smaller. A thousand. A thousand. 
So when I told you that as a man today, you will be expected to do significantly more and significantly better than your fathers and grandfathers, but with less. When some female comes squawking and shrieking in your ear, trying to tell you about the burden of performance, I want you to be aware of what the burden actually is today. Yo, grandmama, y'all need to go take a look at your mamas and grandmamas' houses. They didn't have what your mama had. Why, you have a den and two kitchens and three bathrooms and some of you got back patios, big tall glass doors, a room for every kid of the house. For those of you from the deep south, gone are the days where you shared bedrooms with your siblings no, folks buy a house today. I want the girls to have their own room and I want the boys to have their own room. Back in the day, that wasn't what it was. Back in the day, mama had a room. You might have, if you had five kids, you had two bedrooms, maybe. Today? Oh man, are you kidding me? You got a guest room, a grand room, a foyer, indoor, outdoor kitchens, upstairs, downstairs, basement, while she's telling you about what her grandfather did for her grandmother, and she's not telling you the whole story because it doesn't serve the propaganda. Because then you need to say, let me go see your grandfather's house right quick. Let me see the house that your grandfather purchased for your mom. I'll see if I can get you one of those. I'm just saying. I'm talking about who is Mr. Average today. I'm talking about who is Mr. Average today and does he even know? Does he even know what's being put on him? What I'm saying to you here is that a home isn't an investment anymore. And what does the data I'm giving you tonight tell you? It tells you that the homes are bigger than they've ever been. They're more expensive than they've ever been. And yet our families are smaller than they've ever been. Did you all get that? The homes you're purchasing today, the cars you're purchasing today are bigger than they've ever been, more expensive than they have ever been. And yet the families are smaller than they've ever been. Who are you buying all of this for? Who is it that is convincing you, badgering you, pressuring you, demanding that you must do this? Who is it that is walking you off into huge amounts of servitude that will take up gigantic proportions of your lifetime earnings, whole swabs of it? Who is it that's doing that? Who is it? Well, I can tell you who's doing it in Louisiana. I can tell you who's doing it there. I want the average man today to understand who he is and where he stacks up. I want him to understand that because you see the list of demands is not going to fall off. That's the problem. The list of demands are not going to fall off. You see, men understand that a home's not an asset. It's not an asset anymore because the mathematics no longer makes sense. Women want a home for emotional reasons, not solid economic reasons, not strategic economic reasons. They want it for emotional reasons. And this is why most men get pressured into taking on a mortgage. As I said, we're perfectly happy with an apartment or something. We did the numbers. We're minimalists. The women come in and start thinking, I need to do better than my mom. I need to compete against my mom. I need to do better than my mom. 
I want to be able to stunt in front of my relatives. I want to be able to stunt in front of them. So you see, I can't stunt in front of them on a budget. We got to break the bank. I can't stunt in front of them on a budget. So you wind up trying to finance someone's emotional comfort or emotional fixation because rarely does it comfort them. The number one hoarders that you meet are females. The number one chicks run around with pet hair all over the house. The number one people with pet hair all over the house, females. I'm bringing this up because I want the average man to understand what he's dealing with. I also want you to understand one more thing there. Women will buy a brand new house and a bucket of a car. There's a bunch of you who worked at places. I promise you, you worked at places and you saw females. I mean, she owned her own house and she's driving a damn me Hyundai accent. She, she bought a house, but she drives a Fiat 500. And she's constantly having to get a ride to work. She owns a house but she got to get a ride to work because the car is unreliable. So she's got a mortgage, but an unreliable car. Did you all get that? Did you hear that? She has a mortgage while she drives an unreliable car. She doesn't need the house to keep her job. She does need the car to keep her job. Let me explain one more thing right here. Ladies, there's a reason why the average man needs to wake up and realize who he is. Fellas, I've got a bunch of you here tonight who are truck drivers. There's a bunch of you here tonight who are truck drivers. And fellas, I got some of my truckers here tonight. They live in their trucks. They might have a little old rinky dinky ass apartment somewhere. They might live with their parents. I don't give a damn. These fellas are like, they stacking their bread. They spend, they're spending most of their life in their trucks. It is going to be rare that you get women who will want to do that or will do that. The fellas are out here turning and earning. So if you want to know why it is that some of these numbers look the way that they do and others don't. If you want to know why it is, it's because the men pay a different price. You want to know why it is that the fellas prefer to have a pickup truck, something with utility, because he understands that the car shouldn't be comfort food. He also understands that a home doesn't make money. A car can make money. A home doesn't make money. Your house doesn't make money. Right now, the housing market is so damn screwed up You can't even tell the old lie that you used to that you take equity out of your home. You didn't take equity out of your home to build a business or anything. You took equity out of the home to fix on the house itself or some unexpected expense. But now you can't even do that because the price of houses is so elevated and the supply of new houses is so limited that if you sold the house you're currently in, you couldn't afford to go to a new one. So everyone's holding on to the house they got right now. Because a house isn't an asset the way a car is. You see, a mortgage is a 30-year commitment. A car is a three- to five-year investment. A car is easy to get into and easy to get out of. A house is hard as hell to get into and practically as hard to get out of. And the women are stockpiling as many houses on themselves as they can. Ladies, you want to know why most of you are in unbelievable amounts of stress? You put on weight. You're getting older. Hair's turning gray before you're 40 years old. You got a few bastard kids or none at all because today the amount of foolishness from the females with no kids now rivals the ones with kids. So imagine that. Used to be you had a safe zone. It's no longer a safe zone anymore.
You see, a, a man can purchase a reliable car and then that's it. Y'all think about this for a few moments here. If you paying for a mortgage, you're strapped to the mortgage and you need a house and you need a car or a way to work. If you just give a temporary address to start a job and you got, you got your car, that's it. Hell, there's a, did you all know that there's a bunch of Google employees that have been living in their cars out there? Did you all hear about that years ago? Did you all hear about that? How many of you remember that about the Google employees who, um, live in their car, were living in their cars out there? How, how many of, how many of, how many of you remember that? How many of you remember that? Oh, some of y'all forgot about that. If I can get this thing not to mess up. Try this a different way. By the way, this was from 2020. So just make sure I had that right. Twenty twenty. Okay, go ahead and throw this up there. I do not need that. Thank you. Five reasons why some Google employees live in parking lots. That's twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. From the Times of India, but think about that. What do the males get that the others don't? What I'm saying is that the willingness to wait until you are in an advantageous position, the men, the men understand this. The women are selling their souls early. The men understand this. And what I'm telling you here tonight is that if you want to know why it is that men's home ownership rates, even though the economics clearly state that it's no longer advantageous, from the prices of the homes to the interest rates of the homes, it's no longer advantageous. It's no longer advantageous. So the men understand it and the men get it. The men understand it. The men understand this. So I want you to get how that works. I want you to get how that works. Men understand how that works. So they're making investments in themselves, but disturbingly what we're also noticing here is that they didn't, that the men are starting to catch up with that. The men are starting to catch up with that. Who's pressuring the men to start doing that? Who's doing that? Why is it that the men have started doing things that are disadvantageous? Why is that? And what I'm telling you here is that they're being psychologically maneuvered in those situations. Because the average male is so desperate for sex. The average male is so desperate for sex. He's so desperate for validation. He is so desperate for whatever he can get that he's willing to make himself subservient.
that's where we're at today. Fellas today are doing something. They become so socially awkward. The single mother epidemic, there's a number of different causes. And as a result, the average male today is attempting to outbid. He is attempting to outbid the environment. That's the problem. The average male today is trying to outbid the environment. So what's happening is he sees females making irresponsible decisions. And as his earning potential and earning ability goes up, he doesn't seek to lead. He is instead trying to figure out, well, can I purchase regular convenient sexual access? There is a reason why increasingly the average male today is in more debt. We already covered that men are minimalists. How can minimalists continually walk into an ever escalating cycle of debt? Minimalists don't operate that way. And yet that's what's happening. How is it that people who are minimalists and survivalists by nature, by biology, are not restricting the spending? Why is that not happening? Why is that not occurring? Why is it that the men are not running things like they used to? Why is it the survivalists and minimalists are not doing their job properly? Desperation leads to that kind of thing. And the average man today is struggling psychologically. The average male today is struggling psychologically. I want you to keep that in mind. You see, when you are not taught and when you are not trained to be able to lead, then you're not focused on your ability to survive in the environment. When you have somebody next to you who is a detriment to your survival, then you're supposed to remove that, but that isn't what happens today. So now the out of control emotional spending of the women is now being transferred over to the men. The debt of the women is now being transferred over to the men. The impulsiveness of the women is now being transferred over to the men. And not just any men, it's being transferred over to the average male who can no longer afford it. I'm telling you that this is this burden is being shuffled over to the average male who can no longer afford it. If you are a man in America today making a hundred thousand dollars a year, just understand in all ALL, all every single one of our major metropolitan areas in America. That ain't ballin', that is working class in America today. What I've been telling you now for the last five years, what I've been saying for the last five years, Investopedia and Forbes are finally saying today. I've been telling you all this now for half a decade. They're just now catching up to it today.
this year. And you all heard this from me years ago. And you thought Jason was being hyperbolic. How about now? Let me tell you all something about me right quick for a minute here. There are some people who are offended by my delivery. They are offended by the way I say things. They are offended that sometimes I'm abrasive and I call hoes hoes and I call dumbasses dumbasses. Let me very, let's explain something to you. You got into the position that you're in today because people coddled you. The people who don't win, the people who can't produce, those are the ones who sit there looking to be coddled. You're in a world right now that is eating your ass up like Ritz crackers. San Francisco isn't the result of an accident. San Francisco's hypergentrification was engineered. The island of Manhattan's hypergentrification was engineered. Miami's hypergentrification is engineered. Miami World Trade and, and epicenter of the Americas. That's the city's metropolitan planning division saying that they wish for Miami to be the epicenter of the Americas to literally compete against Dubai. That's engineered. And too many folks here want to hear that they can continue doing things exactly the way they've been doing it. Continue doing exactly the same things they've been doing. And then somehow they'll have different results. The dollar is becoming worth less and the property is becoming worth more. And coddling is not going to overthrow or overturn reality. It used to be that if you wanted to go to a five-star hotel in America, you had to go to one of the top five cities. We got five-star hotels in every state of the union now. Every single one got a five-star hotel now. The landscape and the environment are getting more expensive, not less. If you want to be coddled, go over there to Fresh and Fit. Go over there to CNN. Go somewhere else where they raise children to be big children. This is a no-nonsense haven over here because this is survival. And I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make truth. If that hurts your feelings, I am thrilled to be the messenger of your discomfort. The average man today struggles socially and the average man, I'm talking about not just average in income, but average in intellect, average in emotional discipline, average in emotional intelligence, average in emotional maturity. The average man today is being taken advantage of left, right, and center. That is the plight of the average male today. That's his plight today. The average male today has been struggling. He was just struggling economically. Now he's struggling socially. Let me try this a different way. People, do you know how hard it is to make $100,000 in America today? Even with everything I've told you all tonight, do you realize how hard it is to make $100,000 in America today? Shout out to the Hungry Millennial Network and everyone else there in the super chat who has contributed to tonight's program here, Tommy Randall and everyone else. Thank you very much for your support. We appreciate that. I want you all to think about that for a few moments here. Do you realize how hard it is to make $100,000 in America today. Now, do you know how hard it is to make $200,000 in America today? 
now that you've wrapped your head around how hard it is to make a hundred thousand, do you realize how hard it is to make 200,000? Even with a skill, even with a trade, because even with a skill or a trade, you still have to be in that upper echelon to be able to make no $200,000 a year. Do you all realize how hard it is to clear 200 K a year? Think about that for a few moments. I'm telling you that the top 20% now make a hundred thousand dollars a year. And y'all are saying, damn, do you know how hard it is to make a hundred thousand dollars a year? And I'm saying, by the way, that's not even the top 10% anymore. The top 10% makes almost $200,000 a year. That's the top 10%. All the folks who coddle you are not going to ask you questions like that because that makes you feel very uncomfortable. Makes you feel very uncomfortable when you realize that the threshold for competition is escalating at a exponential level. What used to be balling no longer is, is what I'm telling you. Now, this is really going to hurt your feelings, but what used to be luxury no longer is. That's no longer luxury anymore. Yes, today, yesterday's luxury is today's premium. That's today's premium. It's not enough anymore. And what I'm saying is that if you want to continue living that particular life, Mr. Average today is going to find himself in bondage. Mr. Average today is going to, has found, not is going to, he's found himself in bondage today. That's where he's at right now. And he's found himself there because he he can't stand it anymore. He's not respected. He's not respected. He's not esteemed. Think about that for a few moments. He's paying more than he's ever paid, working harder than he's ever worked, working longer than he's ever worked to get less than he's ever worked. To get less than he's ever gotten. He's getting paying more than he's ever paid for, for a bigger house than he's ever paid for, a more expensive car than he's ever paid for, for a more expensive woman than there's ever existed. And he's getting less than his fathers and grandfathers did. And that's the average guy. The average guy. The average male today is staring down the barrel of a 400 thousand dollar mortgage think about that for a few moments a third if he makes the 1.1 million dollars a year the 1.13 million it's gonna be a third of his lifetime earnings tied up in nothing but that house one third of his lifetime earnings confined into nothing but that house. Now, if you take that house into account and throw in a divorce, you take that house into account and throw in a divorce. And deal with it, nigga. Oh, no, I'm not throwing kids in there yet. No, no, no. I'm not even throwing children in there. I'm talking about it's just you and old girl. I'm not even going to throw the children in there yet. I'm leaving that to the side. 
I'm talking about just if you got married and then you went off and bought that house because you thought that was going to keep her happy. Because she was leaning on you and whining to you about her, what her mama did and they didn't have no house and now you got to make up for that because you figure if you do that, you're going to win the game. Once I get that house, that's it. I win. Ding, ding, ding. Price is right. Then you go off and you spend a third of your lifetime earnings on that home. Next thing you know, she's like, well, you know what? I can get the house without you. I can get the house without you. Doesn't seem so great anymore. It doesn't seem so great anymore. Remember, half of your marriages end in divorce. Over half. Over half of your marriages end in divorce. A prenup is not necessarily going to help you in that situation. There's the problem. A prenuptial is not going to necessarily help you in that situation because if you're in a community property state, the no private agreement trumps the law. And if the judge determines that the house is community property, then your prenup does not apply. So folks need to understand what a prenup is and what a prenup does and what it doesn't do. So a prenup depends on where you are and then it's going to depend on what happens because a prenup is not going to override the law. It's for everything that the law doesn't cover. And by the way, there are a number of things that the law doesn't cover. Mr. Average is not ready for this environment. Mr. Average is going to spend the rest of his life working. Mr. Average is going to spend the rest of his days trying to keep up. And he's going to have to. Because you see, the females are turning a little bit different here. And as their ability, I'll, I'll get back to you in just a moment, ma'am. Y'all can take a look on your screens right here. And here's where the real problem is. When you get to this 35 to 54 year old range when you get right about there that's when things get bad between the ages of 35 and 55 that's when the males start getting their peak value and their peak earnings that's when that happens and what I'm telling you is that as you can see by the evidence on your screen, as you can see from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and the women are like, yeah, we're good. Damn that work horsing. They make it to about their 30s and then that's it. They give up, they give out. Now, what I mean is they give up and they give out on doing it themselves. They give up and they give out on doing it themselves. They don't give up on the idea that they should have it. They don't give up on the idea that they should live that life. They just give up on the idea that they need to go through the hell that it takes to get that. Because you see, men are minimalist, but women are not. So she's going to demand that. She's going to demand that. She is going to demand at some point to do that. Just like a man spends his life trying to fulfill his potential, a woman spends hers trying to fulfill that. So what I'm saying here, as I started off the beginning of the program, the ADHD kids who were talking about, well, were those numbers referring to white folk or black folk? And I'm saying it refers to, can you afford it? Because it doesn't matter who you are or what you are. If your woman has spent her adult life dreaming, I want the fellas to get this, particularly the average dude. And now we realize that the average dude is six figures. 
I did tonight's program here because I'm gonna come back to this in a moment here, but the average dude is six figures. The average dude used to be $50,000 a year. Now he's $100,000 a year and struggling. The average guy today is between $50,000 and $100,000 a year and struggling. Females are looking at you and you talking about you make $80,000, $90,000 a year. And unless she's from a housing project, she's not impressed. She's not impressed. And the reason that she's not impressed is right here on your screen. She wants a man who does at least double what she does. So in other words, if you're a guy making $50,000 a year, hell, the 35-year-old females are making more than that. So you making $70,000 a year doesn't cut the muster either. It doesn't. I've been telling you all forever, you really need to be making more than 150 for it to for the female to feel some type of emotional difference. Remember, attraction is involuntary. Fellas, you ain't got to like it. Attraction is involuntary. Just like you've got no choice over whether or not seeing something round and smooth gets your attention for a female. Attraction to accomplishment is involuntary. It doesn't require thought. It's primal. So when she is a woman and she hears you say, I make $50,000 a year, I make $70,000 a year, and she makes $65,000 a year, she's not impressed by either one of you. If she makes damn near $70,000 a year, she expects you to make 150. It's not good enough that she makes 70 and you make 100. She's going to expect you to make 150. Because what she's going to say is otherwise, what do I need you for? And that's the reality, fellas. It's just the simple reality. She's saying, what do I need you for? Well, that's what she's thinking. And the average guy can't keep up with that. But what he can do is sink himself into a bunch of debt and sit there and smile. Jason, why is it though? Why is it that you're saying that that will just keep happening here? Because the bottom line is, fellas, if that woman has spent her life telling herself that she wants to drive a Mercedes E-Class, she wants to drive a Range Rover. God help you. She wants to drive a G-Wagon or a Maybach. Listen to me, fellas. She is not going to let that go. She isn't. And as far as she's concerned, let me let, me let the fellas in on something right quick. A lot of y'all don't understand, except for those of you who've been through it, Fellas, if a woman can name for you three of the current models of handbags that one of your exclusive designer companies make, dude, she's telling you, I intend to get that one way or another. Fellas, it is what it is. If she can sit there and rattle off Kelly and Birkin, Rita Hayworth or whatever the other ones are, Audrey Hepburn, whatever. Fellas, if she can rattle off the names of the bags that Hermes makes, she wants one. And she gonna get it. If your woman can start naming off the bags of Chanel, Trendy and Coco and all that, if she can do that, um, she's not playing with you. She wants that. Fellas, she ain't playing with you. She's not joking with you. She really does want that. She really does want that. A lot of fellas in here are deluding themselves. A lot of fellas in here are deluding themselves, thinking to themselves that 
if I just do this over here, I'll be okay without recognizing that the standard has changed. Now, for the reasons that I covered earlier here, she's not going to be able to do this herself. You're going to have to cover this. Somebody else is going to have to step in and cover that shortfall and cover that gap. Somebody else is going to have to do that. Somebody else will have to. And what I'm telling you is that she doesn't intend for it to be her. Fellas, that chick you with right now, no, 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 the one in your house, my dude, I don't care how much you paid for the house you're in. If she doesn't have the shoes, the handbag, and the car to match, she's still waiting. Fellas, if she doesn't have the shoes or the car or the handbag to match, she's still waiting is what I'm telling you. Please don't deceive yourself otherwise. And that is going to lead to mission creep or what they call lifestyle creep. You see, men don't really suffer from lifestyle creep, but women do. Well, Jason, what does all of this have to do with the average guy? Because if you are the average guy today, the way the game is being played is that the woman gets in a relationship with you, jumps on your back and screeches at you every day with disapproval that you got to meet some invisible standard. And you don't really understand where it is, where it's going. Some of you fellas need to pay attention to that. There are a lot of you guys right now, you are dating or God forbid married to a diva. Don't you know that she's waiting for you to make good on whatever her internal self image of herself is? Don't you know she's waiting for you to, to match up to that? Don't you know she is waiting for you to match up to that. Well, what's so dangerous about that, Jason? What's so dangerous about this is that the majority of the guys listening to me could never do it. The chick you are with has settled for you while she's telling you everything is fine and it isn't fine. No woman wants to be married or dating Mr. Average including if average is six figures. Fellas, no woman wants to be married or dating Mr. Average, even if average is six figures. Mr. Fuentes, I think that's a very good question for you to be asking here. And you're certainly in the right place to be asking such a question. So I'm very glad you've taken the time to do that. So I think that now is just about as good a time as any to go ahead and open up the phone lines. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the program that all your favorite YouTubers love to hate watch. This is the one. We're going to go ahead and open the phone lines for you here. And if you have been instructed by either myself or my mods to give us a call, then that is not just a great nifty idea. That's an order. So, to uh, our truth and everyone else who has been waiting with bated breath to give us a call, your moment has arrived. Congratulations, you get to join us here on The Business. For everyone else, 
Well, you're definitely invited to go ahead and join us as well. But the folks who have been told that they need to call in, that ain't just a good suggestion. Well, you need to be on the line. The telephone number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. We're going to also go ahead and open up the Zoom for you here. By the way, some folks here apparently want to hear themselves talk. So, Mr. ZL, I don't know. I might, ha- I might have you call in also. He seems to be very, very anxious about life in general. I don't know why. Very, very anxious about life in general. I'm just not sure why. So, I don't know if I want him calling in just yet. But it's, it's never a good sign when the male is running around trying to get attention. It's, it's just not a good sign. It's work should speak for itself let's go ahead and dump the zoom link in the chat room here all right blog talk is going and I sound good over there sound good over there on blog talk all right let's go ahead and pin the zoom link there remember zoom does get priority But in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and check on the phone lines. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the business. You are welcome to be here with us. Let's go ahead and get caller from area code 646. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Onan from Queens. Onan from Queens. What's on your mind? So there's a movie called The Network. It originally started as a play by Patty Chayefsky, but it was a movie um, about a reporter by the name of Howard Beale, and it was played by the character, uh, well, he was played by the actor Peter Finch, right? But just to fast forward to the point, there was a scene between him and Arthur Jensen, who was played by Ned Betty, and the character Ned Betty had said that the world is a business, right? And I believe that the reason things are the way they are today concerning relationships is because women tend to look at men as resources rather than being potential suitors and emotional lifetime support. It's, it's really just a finesse. And I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Okay. Do you think that's new? I don't think it's new, but I do think that it ultimately corrupts the ability for individuals to sustain um, meaningful relationships outside of the context of business and politics. Because you have to remember, politics is just the regulation of power within a given setting. Mm, Right. So if um, I'm going to define that a little bit differently, but politics is how we determine how we divide the society's resources. Okay. Okay. As as far as people are concerned, you're absolutely correct. It does restrict because throughout human history, only about 10 to 20% of the males have actually been the ones responsible for siring most of the children. That's because when women have a choice, they choose the most resourceful male. So when men start in the modern era, when men start making arguments to say, well, Why can't I be chosen because of my personality? When they start making arguments outside of their resourcefulness, there's where the problem comes in. Now you have to understand merely as an intellectually dishonest ploy on the part of females, when females are in the room with a guy who's got superior resources and he's confident in it, then the women will give lip service to trying to talk down the importance of that. But As we know, for all your nerds and geeks and fellows who've been passed over, they'll be the first ones to tell you that, by the way, yeah, the women give, if if women really preferred men with personalities, there wouldn't be a single unmarried or undated nerd on this planet. So women become very practical, especially if they see you as being the means to getting what they wanted. 
Because what they accept is that you've got some leadership ability that they don't have. And that can be a difficult pill for men to swallow. But women become very, very proof conscious when their interests are involved. So what they want to see is proof. A man with resources is not a gamble. A man with resources is proof. And after a certain point, a woman gets tired of gambling. She gets tired of, well, this guy suits my emotions. Yeah, but he doesn't produce any tangible results. At a certain point, whether she gets four or five bastard kids or not, eventually a female gets tired of struggling. And she realizes that your personality doesn't have any tangible value. I mean, it's cute to get along with, don't get me wrong. Oh. But at the end of the day, if she is becoming the owner of a million dollars of personality with $10,000 worth of finances and resources, yeah, that personality is not evening out. So there's where guys are getting it wrong. The fellows are trying to bring a million dollars of personality. And sometimes they'll listen to the females lie to them and say that money doesn't matter. She's just saying crap in front of a fellow who's got it. Once she gets with a man who doesn't have it, she doesn't tell him that. They only tell that to the man who's got it. They never say that to the one who doesn't. The one who doesn't, that's her reason for not giving you the time of day. But here's the issue. It's, it's an issue if the man who does have the resources is also able to see that the woman who's coming to him is just trying to finesse him. It takes away the incentive for that man with the resources to invest in a woman who he clearly knows is just out to get what he has. Okay. Right. You, so that, that's, You raised two interesting things there. So let's deal with the, let's deal, I don't want to say the etymology, but let's deal with the uh, right. meanings behind what you're saying there. All right. First of all, when you say a woman who is looking to finesse, what do you mean by right. how exactly is she finessing you? She's finessing the man that she's dating by putting on a facade of loyalty and benevolence and the ability to provide for that man for the amount of time that she needs to until that man financially invests into her And so that point, she's legally bound to that man and therefore has access to his resources. Okay. Is he not getting anything from her? I do believe that a good woman, a woman who is actually trying to be a wife to a man, will provide necessary um, emotional support and other things that I do think are necessary, right? Um, Things that lie outside of the bedroom. Um, But what I'm saying is that most women are going into relationships with ulterior motives. They, they, They have surreptitious ways that I believe corrupt the ability for men and women to effectively communicate and trust each other. Okay, I I have to disagree with that part. You say they're coming into relationships with ulterior motives. What exactly is the ulterior motive? Because to say they have an ulterior motive means that there is something that was neither stated nor expressed. So what is it that women are doing today that men don't already know? I'm not saying that men don't already know. Right. What I am saying is that too many men. But, but, have OK, in fact but but it, OK, cognizant. here's the problem. It can't be an ulterior motive if you are aware. OK. You, you can't say that the person is being simultaneously ulterior, but at the same time open. It's ulterior, but I see it. No, it, it can't be an ulterior motive if you if you're aware of it. So you're saying that men are aware that women are simply approaching them. To just what I'm get saying is that, what I'm saying is that if I pull up to a red light and I see a guy who says, please give money hungry and he's got a, a, a fifth a, a, a Hennessy bottle in his hand. 
I, I, I'm, I'm smart enough to understand. Eh, I don't. I think you drink your meals, sir. I really shouldn't need him to explain to me that he has an ulterior motive. I, I'm looking at it. So what you're saying is that it's not an ulterior motive unless she cops to it. Well, th this 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 flies in the face of survival. A grown adult functional male organism shouldn't need everything spelled out and explained to him. That's not finessing you. I agree. That, that is not you being finessed. That is you being criminally naive. Okay. Well, like, okay, listen, um, I, I don't, I don't have as much foresight or game uh, as such as it's called. Um, I'm not the most wily individual out there, right? I, I haven't been the most successful in life, but it, it's simply just the way that I'm viewing the situation and why things are the way that they are, right? I, well, yeah, I, but I, I mean, what you said, what people... you said though is that the women are finessing the men. But the next thing is, by the way, do the fellas actually have an agenda? Do they have a reason for wanting her to be there? Because you see, if he doesn't have a clear cut agenda that spells out why he, she's allowed to be there, because the word is allowed. If he doesn't have that up front, then whose fault is that? Well, it relies on the man. I'm I'm not disputing that part. I, I I believe that the man should approach the situation being financially and mentally and emotionally sound, right? What I'm saying is that for the woman who is pretending to be something that she's not in order to manipulate the situation to her benefit, if, if, if it's simply a quid pro quo, right, that's been around as long as time being, right? I, I understand that women offer youth and beauty and, and other physical traits, whereas men provide resources, and it's a quid pro quo. That, that's my point. Okay, and but I then, believe that the, how can you be finessed but, if you understand that and you're walking in the door with that mindset? How could you be mm -hmm. finessed? You're being finessed because you're 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 not receiving what the true person actually is. You're just receiving a facade of this person. I I, I consider it the three month rule, right? You don't really know a person's true intentions, or at least you're not able to sniff it out for what I believe to be about three months well, during the courting process. They they can actually be they can actually hold out longer than that. But what I will say is that when you come in the door saying these are the requirements and this is it right here, if it's supposed to be quid pro quo, this for that, then you should make sure that that's that you're actually getting it. The problem with the rationale you're giving is there are a lot of males who come in the door saying that they want something mm. and then the female gives them a token or a substitute or something else. And he accepts that substitute sitting around patiently waiting for her to show up one day and exchange it for what he actually wanted. And there's the problem. She didn't actually give you what you wanted. She gave you a substitute. Let me tell you all something. I was gonna post this on Facebook earlier today. I didn't do it. I was gonna post it on Facebook earlier today. Folks, Sex is no substitute for respect and respect is no substitute for sex. If what you want is sexual access, well, respect is nice, but there's no substitute for sexual contact. No sex dolls, shout out Greg Adams. No pen pals. No phone sex. There's no substitute for genuine sexual. Can we just, we got to keep it real all the way real tonight here. There's no substitute for genuine sexual contact. None. Not even a little bit. There's none. So with that being the case, you also understand that there's, that sex is no substitute for respect 
but respect is no substitute for sex either. You got a lot of fellas out here who are sitting around in sexless marriages, sexless relationships. Well, why would they be doing that? They're doing that because, well, she gives me a bunch of respect. She takes care of the kids and she takes care of my house. Yeah, she's taking care of everything except you. Because you see, Mm -hmm. you can hire somebody to do all that other stuff. There's no substitute for this. So what I'm saying is that if you allow a woman to give you a substitute for what you actually really wanted, I don't see how you got finessed. What you did was you, she was wagering that you weren't really going to insist on what you said you wanted, that you were giving her too high of a price. And that just goes along with every relationship in every relationship. All of us are willing to pay, but no one wants to overpay. And what she's saying is, well, you know, eh, if I can get all these benefits from you and I don't have to do all this extra stuff, then why should I? If he's going to, if he's willing to give me all of this support and I only got to have sex with him once a month, well, why do I need to have sex with him every night if he's willing to accept? Yeah, he wants every night, but he's willing to accept once or twice a month. Well, why shouldn't I do the once or twice a month? Yeah, he'll whine and pitch and moan and complain, but he'll take it. So why should I overpay? I see what you're saying. You're, you're, you're saying that male simping is in essence incentivizing women's bad behavior. I'm saying that most men today don't have a standard and then they blame the women right. for negotiating his standard downward. Most men today offer a woman his ceiling. Women are not stupid, especially if they see that right. you're not a guy who's accustomed to what it is you're trying to demand. Women can see when a fella ain't that dude. She can see when you're not that dude. And once she realizes, which takes very quickly, oh, you ain't really that fella you pretend to be. She's going to tell you what your real mm-hmm. price is. Now she's going to tell you what the real price is. And she's like, you know what? I bet you you're willing to accept a third of that. I bet you're willing to accept a third. And the truth of the matter is they're right. For the average male, the average male, sad to say, the average male is simply not accustomed to having regular sexual access to anything. So to him, that's the baller life, is no longer having to chase sex around. Most females are painfully aware of this. Most females are painfully aware that most males are struggling socially. So they know all I got to do is give him a little bit more than what he's been getting and I win. So you're not being finessed. Most guys today don't really have a standard. They claim they do. The women know it's cap. The women know he's faking. And what she does is she calls your bluff. Now, if you're not bluffing, that won't happen. But the truth of the matter is, Onan, most men are bluffing. I'll let you have the last word. I agree. I agree. No, I, I, I agree with that last statement, definitely. I, I, I believe that you have too many individuals who are simply willing to put on a facade and pretend to be something that they're not, and they end up getting caught up in the web in their own lie, and they're not able to get themselves out of it. And now they've attracted such a lifestyle to now. It's like people around them are just expecting that. But yeah, I, I do believe that, uh, you know, men have just created this false image. But I'll, I'll learn my plan there. So be well. Thank you very much for giving us a call here. All right. On Zoom, I've got Dimitri and Juliana. Dimitri, I'll give you five seconds to turn your camera on for us here or permanent vacation. Let me go ahead and get the remove button ready here. All right, Dimitri, very glad to have you with us here tonight, sir. What's on your mind? Dimitri, do you have your microphone on? Check your mic settings, Dimitri. I don't think you have your mic on. No, you do not have your microphone on. 
Check your mic settings, sir. I'm not showing you just yet. I'm giving you a minute to get that straightened out. I see you trying to wear some headphones that might not work, but uh, check to make sure you're using the proper input on the mic settings. Try unplugging your headphones. Y'all, they got me doing tech support over here. Okay. Dimitri is working his way through this newfangled technology. Dimitri, I'm going to go ahead and put you back in the uh, waiting room here. See if you can try to get that figured out because there's only so much I can do. Folks, make sure if you're on Zoom, make sure you're checking your inputs. Make sure you check those. Make sure they're straight. Let's go ahead and try Juliana here on Zoom. Juliana, go ahead and uh, turn our microphone and our cameras on for us here, and we'll be glad to have you. We'll come back to Dimitri here in just a few moments. All right, let's try Juliana one time here. Not sure what's going on there, but... Juliana, it's folks. I mean, it's Zoom. It takes care of all that for you. All right, Juliana, your screen is all black or whatever in the world you are doing over there. Ma'am, did you get clunked in the head and your your phone is laying on the ground? What are we doing? Juliana, you got five seconds here to get on camera if you are not permanent vacation. So you're not on you're not on Zoom to show us your finger or whatever. Not really sure what's going on. Okay. Juliana is on a permanent vacation. So, she'll be allowed to do that. Folks, I'm, I'm not going to have you on Zoom until everything is straight. So, I just give you a few moments to get it straight. And then if you're not, that's the way that goes. Dimitri, let's make sure that you got everything turned on here if we can. Because it tells me that your audio should be working. But... Most likely you have an input issue. I'll give you one chance here to go ahead and get that straightened out for me. I will tell you one thing, try unplugging your headphones, sir. See if that helps you. This newfangled technology is not working out for Dimitri as well as life as much as you like to. So hope he's not having other issues. I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program on PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat, Venmo. Thank you very much for your support. We appreciate that here as well. Plant-based trucker, Irvin Palacio, uh, Elevated Engineering, Drake, everybody else who's been in the chat room. Thank you very much for your support. Let me get caller from area code 972. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where you calling from? DeAndre, call it from uh, DMV. All right, DeAndre, and what's on your mind? Uh, I was instructed to call in. Um, I had asked a question, who's going to spend a million dollars on a black female? Okay. This is a question I posted in the chat. Correct. You asked who's gonna, who would spend a million dollars on a black female with a laughing emoji. I was just curious what the joke was. Well, um, there's really no joke. Well, yeah, th you know, it's kind of a joke because, you know, it, even you wouldn't spend that much because you have two female girlfriends, right? So. Um, well, sometimes I have more than that, but uh, no, oh, sir. See? No, sir. It's, it's I got... know you ain't spending a million. Well, first of all, it depends on what you mean by spending a million. Now, if you mean a million dollars cash, well, I guess it depends on if you had that. My CPAs and I have worked out a formula whereby which it determines how much I would even spend as far as discretionary spending of any kind. So I actually have a formula that I use for that. And anybody with a good, competent CPA, they will tell you how much you need and everything else. And then you decide how much discretionary income you have. And then from the discretionary income, then you would decide something like that. But I will tell you one thing. I certainly believe in feeding the troops. I think that it's the height of ridiculousness to not feed your troops. So if a woman is giving yeah, you, a good head well, on slow down. Troops. If a woman is giving you a million dollars of femininity, a million dollars of competence. Now that one's especially hard to get, especially for people like me. 
because basic reading skills and paying attention tend to be big issues. But if a woman is giving you a million dollars of femininity, a million dollars of competence, a million dollars of insight, and a million dollars worth of productivity, I don't understand. So she gives you a million dollars worth of that, and in return, you give her five or six hundred dollars? I think it's very hard to find somebody to, to mirror that from. Like, I don't know who would be a blueprint for that, I mean, unless they're a celebrity, black female, you know, so. Um, okay, let's go ahead. Okay, really let's go ahead and take, well, let's go ahead and take a to, look at that. Do all of that. Mm. Because women are not workhorses, so the financial component of it is, of course, different. We are always the resources. We're always the hunter gatherers. That is not going to change. But just because she doesn't give the same thing does not mean that we, she, we should not get commensurate value. And a lot of y'all are having difficulty determining what value is. All right, let's take a look at that. First of all, you wouldn't spend a million dollars on a single person anywhere. So I think that that posing that particular example is just disingenuous because you wouldn't spend a million dollars in a single day on a single person anywhere. However, over a period of time or for a specific thing that could happen or a specific number of things that could total up to a million dollars, a house, a car, jewelry, um, the things that elevate her status. Because you see, that's something else that a man does that a woman cannot do for herself. I've covered this for years. A woman can't raise her own status. The car she buys for herself doesn't raise her status with anybody. It doesn't raise it among men and it doesn't raise it among other women. So her buying a car for herself is like buying a birthday cake for herself. It has no value. Its value comes if, as validation from others. So as a female, like I say, I mean, if you don't have a lot of value, if, you, if the females you have around you are not up to par as far as their value and their contributions, well, yeah, I can see why you would say that. Here's the real issue. You want to get to a point where a female is worth that. Would that not I guess it, that could work, but they could turn their backs on you. You know, there's like other examples. Okay, like, like well, Steve Harvey's wife. Well, okay, but but you Dr. could Dre's and and you could wife, turn your you know. back on her, sir. And it's a little different, you know. If you're you're kicking in the money, you know, they should just respect it and kind of. Okay, know, no, 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 no. That isn't you know? what you said. You said, well, she could turn your back, her back on you. Well, you could do the same thing. So by that, that's the, what you, okay, slow down. What you just said is exactly what all the single mother hoes and hood rats say when you tell the women about their non-feminine behavior. Well, all he going to do, you don't be giving a man everything you got. He could get up and leave. Well, that's exactly what you're saying right now. So what I'm saying is this is, this is feminine energy talking from one of the lower sectors. This is not the way that masculine men look at that. That's not the way we do. Why would you even make that assumption? That's the part I don't understand. Why would you make that assumption that, well, she could turn, up, she there, could turn her back on you. Why would you make that? It in, you know, just in the public eye. Okay, give me three examples. Uh, Steve Harvey's wife, Dr. Dre's wife. Okay, no, 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 and, no, no, uh, no, no. Which of Steve Harvey's Sorry, wi which of Steve Harvey's wives, sir? You're already messing up. Which? Uh, <laughs> the last one. The last one. Who's the last one? Uh, I don't. I don't really know her name, but he claims the daughter, but the daughter's really not his. That that female. Okay. Are you talking about the woman he's married to now or previously? Yeah. Yeah, the one he, he's married to now. Okay, well, first of all, he's still married to her, sir. He's still married. Y'all, do you understand the drugs you got to do? To... 
we used to have males who acted like men and now they just act like the females if females don't have a point they i was talking one earlier today if females don't have a point they just start making things up it's just they just start making stuff up he's currently married to marjorie harvey now right now and you just said that this was an okay. example of a woman who turned her back on him. So you're telling me she turned her back on him by staying married to him. Do you hear yourself? Well, didn't didn't she have uh, um, what do you call those uh, infidelities or something like that? And other y'all got to understand. Some of y'all sit up here on Facebook and you read these African blogs that just say garbage for attention. If you all want to know why it was that Jason Black never said anything when that mess came up, that's because there was not a single reliable source that said that. So now we're in the day and age where people are saying there's a source close to Laurie to Marjorie Harvey. This is she's getting divorced. And meanwhile, you never heard that from anywhere. Then you have Steve Harvey come out and make a monkey of all of you who've been repeating that. You didn't get it from a single reliable source. You didn't get it from a single place you could trust. You saw it on the Facebook feed from some website or blog you never heard of. You didn't even read what they said to find out if it was substantiated or true. You just started repeating it. And what I'm saying is that's not masculine either. That's gossipy and ho, but it's not masculine. Because you see, if I'm going to speak on another man's name like that, I better have something to substantiate that. Now, I have said many times that I do not believe that Russell Wilson's marriage will last to Ciara because she's made it very clear what she's here for. I have never said that that woman is divorcing him currently or she, there's a source close to this. She said five doors. Those are lies. So you've, you've already struck out again. On the same guy, too, by the way. Steve Harvey, he struck out on both of them. What okay, else, uh, what else you Smith. got? So they have a they have a bad relationship, right? But they're still married, so that's okay. Okay, sir, do you need do you understand what the metaphor turning your back on someone means, sir? You you can't just string together and jumble together a bunch of nonsensical words and say so well, this, he, it means this. of his manhood in public, that's not an example of turning her back on him. No, sir, that that's not turning your. No, sir. That's not turning your back on someone. Turning your back on someone. Okay, so just being a toxic, toxic Turning your back on someone thinks, literally has no. a specific meaning, sir. That's literally what it means. And you can say that, well, you're not, you wouldn't be happy with the metrics of the marriage. Well, I wouldn't be ha happy with the nature of it either myself. And he's been there for 20 years. And so is she. Turning her back on him would be leaving the marriage. See, turning your back on someone means that you are ending the relationship, employment, family, whatever. That's what turning okay, your so back on saying someone means. I need somebody means. down with me like Bill Cosby's wife. I need somebody like that. That's the one to spend millions on. Okay. Why would you not have that? No, well, those women are kind of extinct, you know, because they ain't going to let you just like just run around and just do whatever and just kind of keep their mouth shut and just kind of move under okay, the radar. So, with okay, so you're saying support. so you're saying that being able to sleep with 50 white women and your wife is quiet, that that's worth a million dollars. No, I'm just I'm just trying okay, to find out the what baseline of what no, you're no. talking about. Because okay, when I give my example, I'm asking you, you have something to okay, refute. Sir, I'm asking you for clarity. Now you just mm -hmm. said you just said what your example was. Well, her name is Camille. If Camille Cosby was quiet okay. while Bill Cosby was quote out doing his thing. Well, his thing was sleeping with right. dozens of white women while he was married to her. And if she just stay and be quiet, okay, well, Camille stayed and be, was quiet. Well, that's worth a million dollars. So that's what you just said. Now, you just said that. Now no. you want to distance said, yourself is, from your own words. Is that, or is, that, is that a good example? No, sir. 
I'm not here to say if that's a good example or not. not. You okay. tell me, is that a good enough one for you? No, I'm just trying to find a good baseline. Okay, what, I'm asking of, of you. You, yeah. Mr. Fuentes. Me? No, what no, it, absolutely what not. To, I mean, what you know, to, I, okay, I sir, wrong, sir, you, know, you hear the host just morally fine. Morally, it's wrong to do sir, something like that. Sir, we don't do that. You hear the host just fine. Put so, your burrito back up. You hear the host just fine. Uh, I don't eat burritos. We don't, we don't do that. Push the thong back. We don't do that. You were the one who said that. You're being asked to tell us what's worth a million dollars from a female for you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I think that's a very interesting point to make. By the way, one last question. How much money do you make a year? Um, well, I'm a Salesforce developer, so you can look it up on Google. I don't believe that. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, it uses something called Apex. Sir, I, I, if sir, you know what I, Apex is, sir, I, I can believe W twos or whatever. I, I don't believe that anybody can sit up here. Okay. And, I, yeah, anybody, cool. anybody can sit up here and claim yeah. something that makes no sense. How old are you? Yeah. I, yeah, I know how to speak JavaScript, Java. Sir, I know how to name languages too. That doesn't mean you know yeah. how to use them. How yeah. how old are you? Forty four. Do you have any children? Yes, one in college. You ever been married? Yes. So you've been married and you have a grown child. That's correct. Yep. So the woman that you married, I'll spend a million on my daughter. No. So the woman that you had the daughter with, she was good enough to get pregnant and be married yeah. to, but she wasn't worth a million dollars. Oh, no, no way. Did you ever consider no that? Did when, you ever you know, consider it, that team this, reflects like, leadership? When you, when you get, when sir, you get married, did you no? ever consider that team yeah, go ahead. reflects leadership? Okay. Yeah. Now you chose her. I, so you chose right. her. How long were you married to her? Uh, say about eight. So you chose her and you stayed married to her for almost a decade. Almost. Round about. Okay. You chose her. So if she was deficient, if you didn't, how long were you dating her before you married her? About a year. Okay, so that's nine years. And what you're telling us is that after a year, all, she, all it took her was a year to get you to marry her. That was all it took. All that's she needed all was, it should take. Okay, how'd that turn out? Mr. That's all it should take. How'd that turn right. out for you? Oh, I'm divorced, but look at Will Smith. Well, op obviously a year <laughs> wasn't enough. Now, was it? Because now you're saying that after eight you know. years, you got divorced. Well, here's mm -hmm. the problem. Who filed yeah. for the divorce? Oh, she did. Why? As most women do. Why? Oh, uh, just like on, on some, some generic thing, unreconcilable differences or something like that. I wonder why she would consider uh, you to be irreconcilable. Irreconcilable. Wow. Why would she consider that? I wonder. Yes. I just wonder. I wonder too. Way, I don't know. By the way, did you want a divorce? Well, you know, at a certain point, sometimes men get tired of putting women back on the track and the in the um, okay, sir. You know, the journey second time together. asking the question. We don't need a so, lecture. So yeah, yeah did I, you want I, I, a divorce? I was okay with it. I said okay, cool. I didn't you say were you okay Go with ahead. it. I guess. said, did you also yeah. want a divorce? Because you just said that she wanted the divorce. But what about you? I signed the papers. Fourth time. Oh, yeah. Did you want the divorce? Yeah. Okay. Sure if, you, if you wanted the divorce, why did you not request it first? I don't know. Just like Obama, you know, you he, he know. filed out, Dude, filled out divorce did, papers too. Did you really just right? Did you really just say just like Obama? What are you talking about? Did, didn't Obama do that? Didn't, he put that paperwork on her. 
he put what paperwork on who? Then he uh, filed for divorce. Okay. Either you're on drugs or I'm not sure what the issue is. I really, really don't. Because right now, I think you're doing serious trolling. Now, ordinarily, I would ignore things like that. But when a fella goes this far with it on my phone to disrupt my program, then I'm just like, eh, he needs a lifetime ban. So I certainly hope that you're not sitting on my phone trolling because you've already said two things that were ridiculously false. First, Steve Harvey, now Obama. Okay. Where so you? He never where are you, for sir? Where are you getting? Never went through with sir, it. where are you getting your news and information from? I vaguely heard something about it. I'm so sure. If I'm wrong. My apologies. Okay. Here's my issue, sir. Can you imagine? Can you understand why a woman being? I mean, no offense to what I'm about to say. Can you understand why a woman being married to this for eight years would file for divorce? Well, hold on, man. You ain't never been married, bro. You never chose up on a woman to bring her out of her situation to get married. Okay, sir, I can, sir. You don't even have a kid, bro. Sir, I, I don't need to have a child to understand a failure when I That's see cool. one. Sir, I don't need to have a child to understand a failure when I see one any well, more than I need to be a doctor a to understand. Me? Sir, I don't need to have a, a child failure. or a marriage to understand a failed husband when I see one oh. any more than I need to go to medical school right. to recognize a failed doctor or be a mechanic to recognize a failed car mechanic. It's actually rather obvious to anybody looking. Because you see, if you were really that straight laced and really that solid of a guy, well, it would be obvious talking to you. You literally don't even have basic facts straight. And you've only been on the phone with me for a matter of minutes. And now you're triggered by something that doesn't help your case because that doesn't, anything you say about me doesn't make you look more competent. It's your competence that's lacking, not mine. Well, these, these are just, uh, you know, by the way, by the way, by the way, let me go ahead and address that too, you know? real quick, just while I go knee deep, knee, deep, knee deep off in the red pill retards rumps here. By the way, having a child means what exactly? What exactly is that supposed to be a merit for? Okay, so you had a you got a woman pregnant, so that means what exactly? Right. And I had a and I had a plan for my daughter. Right. Okay. But that, but that means, okay, but how does that, how does that enhance your value? And how does that enhance your value? You brought it up. So how does that make you a better man? Exactly. Well, procreating. Yeah. Procreating? You, you just, you just yeah. named that as some sort of accolade. So tell all the rest of us out here, exactly well, you know, being I able have, to impregnate I have, I have a woman. Life, that's a basic biological function. Marriage. That's a basic biological function. Life. Getting a woman okay. pregnant is basic biology. That's not something you had to work your life to learn and earn how to do. So great, you could get a female pregnant, basic biology. That means what exactly for you? Well, you know, I, I created a family. I, I'm not sure if you have any experience doing that yourself. Sir, it doesn't sound like you created a family but because, I, I believe, I believe sir, it doesn't it. sound I like you created a family because the, right the first opportunity the woman had, she got up and left. So it doesn't sound like you actually did that. It happens, it happens to the best of us, man. You can okay, have but you can have our, dollars like okay, Dr. but Dre. what, what makes you, you the best, what makes you the best of us? You can have a billion dollars like Dr. Second Dan. time, sir. Be. What makes you the best of us? Oh, I never said that. No, no you just said that it happened. No, yes, you did. You just said it happens to the best of us. I'm like, what great. What makes you the best of us? Oh, well, you know, not me, but look at Dr. Oh, Ray. so in other Dr. words, billion, so in other right? words, so in other words that, okay, sir, you just said that getting divorced, no, sir, sir, you're going to calm yourself down, sir, you're going to calm yourself down, put your thong back in your pants, calm yourself down. Come on, man. 
come on, man. You just said that why, divorce why, why happens to, to like the wife sir. To you just said that divorce brother. happens to the best of us. I said, so you're the best of us, and you said, oh no. Then stop trying to speak for the best okay, of you us. Could, you could exclude me out of the, out of out of that. Exactly, okay? exactly, I'm not exactly. exactly. That's right. exactly what but just we're doing. You have money, doesn't make you a good sir, father. Look at I said, look at Donald Trump. sir, you're the one talking about money. Nobody talked about money at all. Triggered again. So, by the way, obviously, when I told y'all before, his money ain't no good. How much money? You worry about a guy spending a million dollars. You'll never be able to spend that. Never. And there's where the real problem comes okay, from. Okay, we was talking about finances, average men. You're not talking about, oh, you know, he makes you feel good. He gives you back rubs and massages. He takes you out on long walks on the beach. You ain't talking about none of that. You're talking about bread. That's what you're talking about. Skrilla. Okay, sir, you, ain't talking you about were talking about, tangible no, stuff. sir, you were talking about who's going to spend a million dollars on a black woman. You can't spend a thousand. Mr. Um, yeah, Mr. Mr. Customer it. Service Manager, you could you let can't you spend it. you can't spend a thousand, and yet you're trying to let speak for people it. who could spend a million to determine their value prospects. A woman would never get ten thousand from you, and yet you've got ne something negative. Who would spend a million dollars on a black woman? You can't spend a thousand. You literally can't spend a thousand, but you have a commentary about who should spend a million. Meanwhile, a woman's not going to get anything from you, million or otherwise. And that's the point I'm making. You're in no position to even ask that question because you're not in any position to reward any female for anything. Now, as far as marriage is concerned, I've had five proposals in my life which I'm sure is about That's awesome. which is about six more than you've ever had. I have the luxury of saying no. I'm a hot commodity. You see, for those of you who are not, you had to get married in your 20s. When your value was low and it never got any better. And now we have delusions of grandeur. I've got something you wish you had, freedom. But beyond that, I've also got years of insight and there are mistakes I won't be making. This is a perfect example of the low value male. The problem I have is for you to say who would spend a million dollars on a black woman. There's absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. None. If the female is worth it. But then again, I got to take a look at the man the female is with. And if she's with a guy who ain't really producing and not really doing much, but he wants to talk down on the females, let's be very, very clear, buddy. You got to earn the right to criticize black women. You can't just come in here stumbling no, off of Skid Row no, and talk about you're no, going to criticize black women. You got to earn the right to do black. that. My mom's black. My ex-wife is black. Did my this fella? Black. Did this fella really just say his Yo, mother is black? And I and, and I I've employed black women. So, oh, uh, righty then. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes me an expert to speak on black women. Sir, you, like didn't, you didn't earn your women, mother. You were born You were born yeah. to your mother. You didn't earn that. That wasn't a connection you chose. That was just a fluke of statistics, probability, and genetics. That's not something you chose. Furthermore, we don't know what quality of woman your mother was, and your mother's not representative of black women in general. Unless you're trying to make that leap of logic. No. Y'all, he literally said, I, my mama black. I'm like, okay, I, I, I didn't see that one coming. My wife, my ex-wife is black and my daughter is black. What about your father? Oh, uh, he's not black. So let me get this straight. You're a biracial dude trying to talk about no, black women. I don't, I don't subscribe. I don't subscribe to bi so biracial. Let me get this straight. You know? and, and, in America, you let can't, me get in America, this straight. I can't, I can't. You're a fellow whose father up, is not, say, oh, your father is white. not black, they don't, they don't work like but that. you got something greasy to no. say about black women. 
Yeah, yeah, I do. Yep. Sure do. Auntie, yeah. chill! Do, do you see a problem with that? Absolutely, I don't. Have you talked? You, you don't know how. I have you raised. talked to your dad about that? I don't need to talk to my father. My I'm older than what my father lived on this planet. You do understand that the optics of this are horrifying. I don't know what you're referring to. Okay, I guess you'll have to Google optics and horrifying, but this this sure doesn't look good. That's all I'm going to say. This this looks not so great. It really really does. Hey, you know, man, I I was I was I was raised black. I even donated to um one of your movies. I'm glad to before. hear that. I'm glad to hear that. And what it's you're telling me is that all of that immersion in black society led you to getting yeah. on my phone and saying who would spend a million dollars on a black woman? Yeah, it's just like um, like a headliner. Not not much of a, you know, we, we're not doing a deep dive. We're not writing a book on this stuff. I would never look at my black, black great-grandmother today, and my black grandmother. Sir, I would never look at my black great-grandmother, my black grandmother, my black aunts, my black mother, I would never look at any of them and then open up my mouth one day to say who would spend a million dollars on a black woman. These are senior black women. You're okay, talking, no, what, sir. What you just said you just said that your mother was black. Twenty four. You just said and your mother ain't, was ain't black. None of those, ain't none of those women in the you just said your mother was black. Worth a million dollars. You just none said your mother was Ooh. black. Yeah. And you said that was what qualified you to speak on black women was your mother was black. Was your mother a respectable, Absolutely. was your mother a respectable black woman? Yes, nine to five working woman, hard working woman. Oh, good. You'll and, probably say, oh, oh, good, well, sir. That's, I'm not saying anything about that. What makes your, <laughs> what makes your mother worth okay. spending a million dollars on her? I'm sorry, what'd you say? What makes your mother worth spending a million dollars on her? Uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have spent a million dollars on on my on my mom. No, no, I wouldn't do that. Nope. I'm gonna tell the truth. No. But my daughter, you know, that's different. Yeah. My my ex wife. No. Okay, so let me no. get this straight. You just told the world that my your daughter, yeah. you just told the world that your mother was what gives you justification to speak on black women, and then you said your mother was a fine, upstanding citizen. She worked nine to five. And you think so highly of your mother who raised you that you would never spend a million dollars on her. And yet your daughter who didn't raise you and is just a teenager at best and young adult at worst is somehow worthy of spending a million dollars on and she hasn't done anything for you. Oh yeah, yes yeah, she has. She's made me proud. She's gone to college. Your mother didn't make you proud? Going to college. Oh, uh, you know, you know, just like you said on a prior program of yours, you don't get to pick your parents, and you know we don't all have the perfect parents. Second time, your mother we, didn't we make you proud. Don't. I'm sorry, the phone got distorted. The phone bit. is fine. Your mother didn't make you proud. No, no, not 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 too much. No, not not somewhat, but not. She could have did more. Okay, know? so you're and you're telling more. me that your daughter couldn't also have done more. Well, she's on. She's only in her teens still. Okay, she's got. Plenty. <laughs> First of all, there are no perfect parents, and there damn sure aren't any perfect children. You sound incredibly uh, imbalanced to set, suggest such a thing. There are no perfect people. There's no perfect parents, correct. There are also no perfect children for you to try to imply that somehow you've got a perfect daughter. That's just criminally dishonest. No, if I had Lawrence Fishburne's 
daughter, of course. No, I wouldn't spend a million okay, on well, her. Well, we don't have anything. We don't have anything to compare it to. Like we, okay, well, that we only have your word, and since you raised her, we, that's very much in question. What I will say is she's not perfect. So how is she already proven right. that she's worth a million dollars as a teenager? But the woman who raised you, which probably we should think about, this, she mm-hmm. made you. I'm hearing on my phone, so maybe you're correct. But the woman who raised you is not worth a million dollars. But the daughter who has done nothing except eat and apparently not rack up a criminal record is worth a million dollars. Your daughter hasn't contributed anything to you. Oh, she's still building the legacy, man. She's going to school. She's doing the okay, right but thing. okay, no, 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 no. That's and if not I could give no. Her- that's not an accomplishment, sir. Right. You can't give her credit for something that hasn't been done. Your mother has already well, completed she- her task. You're you're being yeah. you're trying to project on your daughter. That's speculation. So you're trying to give your daughter credit for things that haven't even happened, which is exactly what I just said. Your daughter hasn't done anything. She's too young to have done anything. So for you to put more value on speculation than on actual accomplishment, yeah, we got some serious mama hate issues going on. Serious well, that's mommy issues. What they issues. do in the combine, you know? Okay, sir, you're not in the combine, and you you never made it, and you'll never be. Uh, no. Okay, you, you never, <laughs> no, I'm just you never what, made it. Okay, but sir, you there. never made it and you'll never be. No, that's sir, the you never made it and you'll never be. You're not an NFL team, nor are you a college team. You're not qualified <laughs> to be able to determine who should be drafted for a combine or not. So you're not even qualified to compare yourself to them. Now, that's just delusion. It's I will just an say, analogy. I will, just no, an sir, it's not an analogy. It's a character flaw. What I will say is that when a man in front of other men, tells them what his mother is not worth. Just remember something. We're only going to give you at best half as much respect as we see you give her because that is the woman who gave birth to you. And to be able to speak down on her, that is automatically speaking down on yourself. And that doesn't mean you have to create a phony vision of her, but just understand there is no condemnation you can do of her in front of other men that doesn't directly reflect on you. Your daddy should have taught you that and clearly didn't. You're in front of another grown man speaking badly of your mother. No, I I never, I, I said, I wouldn't spend a million dollars. Okay, on her. No. if you wouldn't spend a million dollars on you're, her, you're then I shouldn't extras. spend a hundred dollars on her. There, Sir, you, you if bro, you, you wouldn't spend a million dollars, I would not spend a <laughs> hundred. We're not going to outbid you. If your mama is not worth a million dollars to her son, why should she be worth a hundred dollars to the rest of us? Well, she's proven her worth. To whom? She hasn't proven it to us. I'm not married to her. She hasn't proven it to us. I'm not married to her. According to you, she's not worth anything. It's not my responsibility to spend a million dollars on my mom. Yes, sir, but the the, responsibility. But, sir, the point is if this is how that reflects, that tells us about your value. I'm I'm straight. I'm I'm A1. I'm good. Does your ex wife feel the same way? It doesn't matter what she thinks. I just deal with it. Oh, really? So it doesn't matter what your mother thinks, your grandmother thinks, your ex wife thinks, the people listening here. Doesn't matter what any of them think. I just deal with my daughter. And if we talk to your daughter in five or six years and she agrees with your ex-wife, then what? You know, people um, have their own opinions. You just got to respect Oh, it. now it's just their own opinion. So that wouldn't be the, yeah, I'm messed up. It's, well, she got, then the daughter will get tossed on the heap with everybody else. Which that little heifer screwed off too. She got too much of a bottle in her. So, yeah, just, um. Hey y'all, his mama black and his daddy isn't. I mean, this all right. This this has been a very revealing call. Same, same thing as Malcolm X. This is a very thing as Malcolm sir, this X. Been a, and just, Mal- just reverse. And Malcolm X never said a single negative word about his mother. And that woman and did. Had I a, say a single and that negative woman, word about yes, my mom? Yes, you literally. I just yes, said I you did. Spend a million dollars on her. You it's not just my responsibility you just to do told that. us about how they don't live I'm not up. Married to you her. can't choose your parents, and they don't live up to expectations. Mm-hmm. 
get some therapy, get off the phone before um, you before you say okay. anything else to embarrass your bloodline. I'm trying to help you right now before you do anything else to immortally embarrass them like you've just done in the last 10 minutes. Hang up before you say anything else what? that reflects horribly on them. Because I would have spent a million dollars on my mom. I said something derogatory. I said something derogatory. And deal with it, nigga. I literally just told him to hang up before he says anything else worse. I he immediately he immediately here. proceeds to start talking worse. I tried to help him. I advised him what to do to not make this worse. He immediately disregards it. He hates his mom so much that he didn't just stop. He just, I'm doubling down. Folks, folks, folks. I'm just saying, I was trying to help him. That's why I didn't hang up on him. I'm not going to hang up on him. I'm just saying, he didn't understand. Dude, I'm trying to help you out. I said, brother, stop. You've dug deep enough. He's like, no, nah, hand me that snow shovel. Like, we can do better than this. Matter of fact, let me get out this damn hole. Where's a back hole? Beep, beep, beep. I suppose on the one hand, I think it's bad. And on the other hand, it's just like, well, she raised him. So on the one hand, I'm like, this ain't great. But on the other hand, she raised him. And this is how committed he is to dishonoring his mom. This is how committed he is to it. That's that's the reason. There's the problem right there. There's the problem. He hasn't said a single negative word about his dad. Now, did y'all notice that? Not one negative word this whole time, not a negative word about his father. Now, there's where my ears went up. A lot of smoke for black women. Not a word about that white man. Not a word. He hung up the phone, so. I wasn't going to hang up on him. I wasn't telling him to hang up. I was just saying, hey, dude, I'm trying to help you. First rule of being in the hole. Quit digging. He's like, hell no. I got a big bag down here from Home Depot. Always wanted to be a miner. Bruh, you are doing the most. You think we're going to respect that? You think that you're, you're winning points with us? Because all you're really doing is telling us what went wrong in your marriage. That's the only thing you're telling us there. I'm glad we got around to that, though. Let me get a call from area code 914. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, Jason. This is Michael. I'm a truck driver. I'm, in a, I'm, call, I'm living in New York, but I'm calling... I'm in Wyoming at the moment. Um, I, 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 I was listening to your broadcast, or listening to the broadcast, and I had a question because uh, you said about um, about owning a home and stuff, stuff like that. Um, I wanted to buy a home for an investment property um, because I'm a truck driver and I'm on the road probably sometimes two months at a time. So um, I do not have any kids. And I've never been married. I'm 49 years old. I have a, I have a good saving. But right now, the economy is not really – the, the uh, interest rate is very high. Um, I'll be a first-time home buyer. So I don't want to do anything right now. So I'm waiting. I'm still saving and I'm waiting. Uh, the, trucking, the trucking industry, it's, not, it's, it's very unstable. So I was looking for other, other uh, avenues to invest my money. So I was looking at an investment property. I don't really need any place to live. For me, I just wanted to, like, you know, uh, make more money. So um, I, that's basically because I don't look at a home like you say. A home is a is a liability. It's not an asset, especially if you live in it. So I was looking at looking at something for an investment property. Okay. Well, definitely, like I say, real estate has its ups and downs too. So as far as stability is concerned, everybody wants stability, but you have to be able to handle instability in any line of work you go into. So sometimes things are going great and other times okay. they're not. So this idea that real estate is protected, you might want to go take a look back at 1987, 95, 2008. 
hell, 2021, okay. uh, 2022 till now. So real estate is not impervious by any stretch of the imagination. All that haven't been said. If you didn't okay. want to look at that, you know, like I said, that's something you may want to look into if you have enough money for it. I recommend if you don't have a realtor and a CPA, you want to get them so you have a team of advisors on your side to tell you if in your position is financially feasible for you to do so. Okay. I have a Roth IRA for my, my, my retirement. So do you think it, I wanted to join your, because you say you have a, 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 a Patreon. I wanted to join because I, 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 I wanted to learn some more about like index fund and mutual fund for my investment. So when I get, I, when I get older, so I would just, um, like I, I hear you said about, you know, the way everything is going, I made 120 last year. And this year, it's the, the market has been really bad. For uh, if other truck drivers call your your broadcast, they will explain to you what's going on in trucking okay, right well, now. Okay, well, I've, like I've, a, I've talked like, to a I've talked to a number of them here now, so I'm not really sure where. Oh, you, you have okay. Yeah, it depends on where you're driving and stuff. If you're not doing OTR, that's probably your first issue. I'm OTR. Then. Well, definitely. You're gonna, I'm OTR. Like I said, I mean, there's the the money is still out there. Hell, I was just driving around last night, and every truck has got a now hiring on it. So I think some fellas here are going to have to start adjusting what they're doing. Some of the easy stuff that they were doing, there's some of the things that they were accustomed to doing. You're going to have to make modifications to that. Guys tend to get very comfortable. We had one fellow who called a patron last week, and he just wanted to do hazmat. So he's asking all kinds of silly things and talking about most 18 wheelers today is manual. And I just said, you know, I'm not even going to argue with you. I'm not even going to argue with you. Most of the fleet is automatic now. And this guy's telling me it's manual. So I'm just like, you know what, fella? I'm not going to argue with you because it's very obvious that you're trying to do something else. So definitely, like I say, for a lot of you guys out there and stuff, you have to understand you can't be monosyllabic. Look it up. You know, you're going to have to have make sure you have every endorsement that you can and every ability that you can. So that way, when the market changes and when there's shifts going on, you can just make the changes you need to to go wherever the money is. Trucking is a nomadic business. Sometimes it runs to the south. Other times it runs to the Midwest and the north. You have sometimes it's in oil and sometimes it isn't. There's an ebb and a flow to them. The real thing is, are you prepared to make changes and adapt Or are you waiting to like so many other people, I'm going to sit where I am and wait for the market over here to recover over here where I am. No, I'm switching. I'm switching. I'm, I, um, I, I believe me, I'm switching, but I just didn't want to, um, because I don't want to tell the, com- uh, the company I'm working for right now what I'm doing. I don't want them to know my next move. Cause you, I always hear you say you move silent, you're moving silent. So I don't really let them know anything, but I'm, well, I'm already have having to. my plan of what I'm doing. I mean, you don't have to let them know. There's not where, no, you're not required to let the company know anything except your two weeks notice. That's always good. Okay. And the other thing is yeah. you don't have to tell them anything necessarily unless you got a better offer from another company. Now, if you got a better offer from another uh, company, my way of dealing with that kind of thing, and it's up to you all, but my way of dealing with it has always been the same. I always I only tell them after I've landed another job somewhere else that pays more money to which I tell them, oh, by the way, these folks over here, they pay me more than y'all are. So if you can beat that, I would love to stay. That's what I used to say everywhere I was. Hey, you know, these other folks are offering me more more money for this. So I want to stay here. So if you can beat their offer, I'd love to stay. And if they ask you what it is, then you just say whatever number you want to say. Whatever the number is now that would get you to stay, that's the number you say. Not the number the other company told you. It's like, okay, well, here's the number now. The number I need to stay here, even if the other company is paying $1.75 a mile, you tell them two fifty. dollars Well, that, that's how much it would cost me to stay here. Only you don't say that. And you just tell them I got the magic touch, I guess, but that's what they're offering me. So if you're willing to, if you all can beat that, I'd love to stay. And the reason for that is because you want to make sure that you've given them an opportunity to, because everyone can understand you leaving for more money. Every employer everywhere, they can't get mad at you for that. 
There's no employer that's going to get mad if you left to go to work for somebody else who's paying more money. Now, if you tell them, man, you white folks is messing with me and all this, well, that now that's going to go over a different way. But nobody is going to be upset if you say I'm leaving for more money, especially if you gave them the opportunity to match it. Hey, if you can make this pop off, I'm trying to stay. So how much is that? Ooh, boys. Ooh, they paying you a, oh, they paying you a lot more over there. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to stay over here. Ooh, we, we can't do that. You know, we family over here. Well, okay, well, I understand that, but I got bills over there. So what are we going to do? And that's it. You know they're not going to meet it. So if it does come down to that, that's the way you deal with that. Don't be nasty. Don't this, that, and the other. If it comes down to it, that's what you do. But I need you fellas yeah. out there, if you don't have all your endorsements, if you don't know how to drive everything, if you're not willing to, you know, jump to where the money is, that's a problem. I find that among truck drivers, they get very comfortable and they wait for things to change where they are. Yeah. We just saw what happened at yellow problem. The yeah. writing was on the wall at yellow. Now there's the problem with that one. But then again, just like the others, I mean, the writing is always on the damn wall. Every, these things never just come out the blue. The writing is always on the wall. There's always, there's always signs that things are not, things are not going good. But truckers tend to get complacent. They tend to get comfortable. And then they get stuck. You're right. So you have to understand. You're right. You're right this Sorry. is something that you all don't think about. But being a truck driver is being a nomad. Think about being a truck yeah, driver. Right. Being a truck driver is like being in the oil drilling business. I didn't say the oil well. It's in the oil drilling business. You're going to go from one place to another. You got to go where the money is. You got to go where the opportunities are. You can't get married to a specific company, a specific truck, or, God forbid, a specific geographic region. You can't do that. Dennis. You can't. It's very comfortable, but you can't do it. You're, you're setting yourself up for failure. The guys who stay hungry and keep that nomad mindset. Let me tell you, if you're a truck driver... You should be able to tell me where every Bucky's Pilots or whatever is on Interstate 10, 20, 30, 40, 95, 5, and all the way up to 95. You should be able to tell me where everyone is, <laughs> at least with those, with those three, with those four. You should be able to tell me at least Interstate 5, 10, and 95. You should be able to tell me where that is. If you can't, I don't take you seriously. I can't take you seriously if you can't tell me where all the good truck stops are on those three thoroughfares. I'm like, you trying to stay in a specific region because you want to go home or your girlfriend's got a nice ass. And it's, it, it don't work that way, man. You got to hit this road. You got to hit this road. Nah, and right. wherever the money is, that's where you got to go. That's where you got to go, man. Years ago, um, there was a rapper was named uh, Gilly. He was talking with his brother on one of his podcasts. And he was talking about, you know, his female, he had to tell her, hey, baby, he said, you know, he's, he said, you don't understand how it is. As black men, we got to get it while it's out here. Because you don't know what it's like. It's one year it's out here and the next year it ain't. So we got to get it while it's out here to be gotten. And if where you at is not popping, it's like, hey, I got to go where the money is. A truck driver cannot get married to a specific truck company or geographic location you can't you got to go where the opportunities are your only obligation is make sure your credentials stay clean so that if you do need to make a jump you can do that because it doesn't matter what company you go to as a truck driver you can always go back where you were as long as you didn't screw nothing up if you leave them folks you're working for tonight dude don't tell me you can come back to them in six months or a year the now hiring sign is still going to be there. There's a load that's going to need to be picked up and they don't give a damn who gets it so long as it gets got. So y'all have no permanent friends. You have no permanent enemies, only permanent interests. Wherever you at today, you'll be able to go back in six months or a year or five years, assuming they didn't go out of business. So go make the money where it's at. And when the money dries up there, you get up and you leave. That's what, that's the mindset you all need to have. Your grandfathers had it. Why do you think there's so many black folk who ended up in California, Chicago, and Detroit? 
I'm from Louisiana, but most of the black folk in Chicago are from Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. Why do you think that is? Detroit, same thing. Those, those are folks who directly left the southern states because GM and Ford had it popping in Detroit. California yeah. had it popping in LA. It is what it is. They didn't stay in Louisiana. They, they went to go follow the money. I can't be mad at that. I can't be mad at it. Well, that's where y'all are at today. Yeah. This idea that the money going to come to y'all, especially as men, the money ain't coming to you, dude. You got to get up and go get it. And that means you get ready to move. And I know it's not comfortable sometimes, but your grandfathers and your fathers did it. How the hell y'all is too good for y'all? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jason, I got one qu- one more question. I don't want to hold up your broadcast. If you don't mind, uh, I don't want to cut you off, but when before you go, I just wanted to ask one more question. Um, go ahead. Like I hear you said early. Sorry. Yes, go on. Yeah, I hear you said early about a um, a female. Um, like, wh- when do you like when when do you know like what what what's the sign you're looking for when you know meet a woman and it's one you want to invest in you don't want to like invest in the wrong female like you want to upgrade her what, what is there any sign you suppose is there signs you're looking for. Yeah, the, the first uh, sign that you're looking for is in yourself. That's the first sign you're looking for. Okay. If you so cannot... basically invest in yourself okay, then. sir, listen. Just listen. How old are you, young man? Uh, 49. Okay, not a young <laughs> man at all. <sighs> He's way late in the game to be asking this. Brother, first of all, as men, we have to have ourselves together before we talk about investing in anybody. We got to have ourselves together. And that means that you must have a clear, concrete vision of who and what you are as a person. Well, Jason, that's a metaphor. What the hell does that mean? What that means is you need to be able to tell me with absolute precision how much money you aim to be making a year to live off of that this is where you belong in life. You need to be able to tell me how much money you need to be able to tell me exactly what kind of car you drive. You need to be able to tell me exactly uh, what type of shoes I, you need to be able to tell yourself exactly what your life is, who you well, are, where well, it I is. Don't have any... Okay, brother, just listen. Okay, just, okay. I've said this a few times. The, the women don't like this either. What you're doing right here. This, this, this is why a woman, you can't invest in a woman because you're not getting yourself together. You have to be able to strictly concretely define all of those things. Then you must achieve them because you are wow. not fit to upgrade anybody. So long as you are a work in progress. If you ain't built, if you haven't proven you can upgrade you, how the hell are you going to master upgrading her? So y'all want to put the cart on top of the horse and get to the good part. And that's how you, how you mess it up. If you're not finished getting built, all you're going to do is get in prime position to mess this up. So, fellas, if you want to know how to upgrade a woman, that's simple. Start with yourself. I don't, but Jason, oh, hell, I don't feel as good as she does. <laughs> okay, that, that's the problem. You're too busy focused on the end goal, and you're refusing to master the process. That's why you can't get to the goal. You have to master the process first. When you are, when you're done building yourself, then you will have a proper appreciation for each dollar that you've gotten. But furthermore, you'll have a very clear idea of where your life is going. Therefore, now you know what type of female to plug into that life. Because you've lived it. You know what's necessary for you, and now you know what's necessary for her to complement that. You can't do that if you're not finished yet. If you're still a work in progress and you don't know up from down, and you're still trying to figure it out, then guess what? That's all you can do. So start with yourself. Finish with yourself. 
Then you will okay. be able to easily recognize the females who complement the life you've built. I cannot tell you how to get them to complement a life you haven't built yet. Okay. Because you haven't so, demonstrated, because okay. I'm going to sit up here and give you the ideas that work for me. Here's the problem. We're having difficulty getting you to maintain a $100,000 a year income. And I've already explained to you that's just working class today. We haven't been able to get you to maintain that. So with those wide, what? wild swings in performance that you have, exactly how do you plan on maintaining a, an, an upgrading and maintaining a female when you've got these radical swings in your productivity? There you go. I think the light bulb might be flickering its way in, 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 into lighting up here. Now I think he's able to wrap his head okay, around so, that one. Yes, you're talking yeah, about upgrading a female, so, but your so performance make, so, is inconsistent. So, so, I make, so make 200000 instead of 100000 you're saying. Well, what I am saying is, first of all, we need to have some consistency. Not excuses. Consistency. Your job is to solve problems, not to vent or express them. Women respect men who fix things, not men who whine about not having them. She doesn't care how you get it fixed. She wants it fixed. And if you prove that you are incompetent and cannot fix it, she waits for someone who can. Your job is to fix these issues. You've already expressed to me what it was. And like I say, this is what I mean by you're not ready to do what you're talking about yet because you blazed by it and you're the one who brought the issue to me. The, hey, Jason, the trucking industry is inconsistent. I'm like, no, your habits are causing inconsistency. So you see, just something that simple that you could have fixed without calling me, and I'm not saying that you're dumb. I'm just saying that is something if you actually thought about it and just reason with yourself and just you know settle with yourself, that, hey, I'm going to have to dig in. This is what I got to do. The answers are actually already self-evident. Going forward, you can't rely on that kind of strategy. Well, I'll call Jason for this, that, and the other for things that you could have figured out on your own if you were willing to do it. So I'm, I'm right. trying, I'm trying right. to I enlighten you. you and illuminate you to that part. That's the part that females respect. That's the part that females admire. And that's the part that will qualify you to upgrade her when you got all that mastered and figured out. Because you know full damn well, if you had to go jump across the country to go keep your income consistent, you already know what you're looking for in a woman to be deserving of getting upgraded for that. But you also know where she plugs into your life. She's supposed to be Johnny on the spot. I'll give you all one example here. If a female ever hits you fellas up with the, that's what wives do. You tell her, well, look here, standing in front of bullets and paying for dates is what husbands do. A female who is approaching you to make everything outside of sex easy. Sex is supposed to be a given. Jason, what qualifies a female? Is she making everything outside of sex easier for you? There's the question that men don't ask because they're so focused on sex. How hard is that supposed to be? As opposed to sex is supposed to be a damn given. It's not supposed to be something you fight for. It's supposed to be a given. And if it's not a given, there's a mistake. You've already made a basic mistake, but her biggest skill shouldn't be her sex game. Her biggest skill should be her assisting you game. She got to take time off work. She does that. She needs to take time on the road with you. She does that. She needs to make sure you good before you leave out for two, three weeks. She, she got that handled. That's a million dollars of femininity. Because if you were Idris Elba or Michael B. Jordan, she would be on Johnny on the spot. If she's giving you the Idris Elba, Michael B. Jordan, uh, Denzel Washington treatment, nigga, you winning. But like I say, you recognize it when you're getting it. There's, there's no question that that's, the, that's what I'm getting. So that's what I mean. Like You'll know it. But first, you got to get yourself together because a woman who's looking to give you that kind of treatment, she's not going to do that. She's not going to give you Idris Elba treatment. And, and you, you're giving her walk-on service. You're an extra in the movie, but you're trying to get Idris Elba treatment. It's, it's not going to work that way. Fix yourself first. Finish yourself first so that she has a program to plug into and be a part of. Finish building your program. Yes. Then we talk about upgrading the female. Because all you can do right now is squander okay. resources. 
You want a chick to hang out with? Go ahead and do that. Don't get her married. Don't get her pregnant. Um, finish putting your game together like it needs to be. Then you've got something to plug her yes. into. Now you can actually give her rules because upgrading is supposed to be a reward for her adhering to the rules and demonstrating excellence. You haven't given her anything to demonstrate excellence toward. Get that fixed first. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. We appreciate that. Let me get called from area code 774. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Jason. This is Juliana calling from Seattle, Washington. Hello, Juliana from Seattle. She was on Zoom and then she starts playing around. I'm sorry. I was at work and I had to go back to work. I couldn't be on Zoom. Really? She called up on Zoom. I'm sorry? She called up on Zoom, but okay. What's on your mind, Juliana? I did. I was on my break at the time. Um, I was calling with a question about what you think about a woman assisting a man pay off his debt. Silly, stupid, dumb, idiotic. He is incompetent, and you're about to become more incompetent. A man should not help a woman pay off her debts, and a woman should not help a man pay off his debts. You two need to both come together demonstrating financial competence. A person who is unable to handle finances that they themselves are in charge of is incompetent. If a person is incompetent, you need to be asking yourself, is this the best? Why, why would I want to get my finances entangled with somebody who's incompetent? Which is what you're doing if you, quote, pay off their debts. Wow. The other thing is you're creating okay. moral in the financial world. We call that moral hazard. Long story short, moral hazard means that if you save a person from getting into a mess that they themselves got themselves into, what is their incentive in the future not to repeat the same behavior? We're not just talking about children. We're grown people. If you save them from this, what's their incentive to not just turn right around and do it again? And then look to you or someone else to come bail them out. As opposed to saying, I need to make changes in my behavior and defensive steps to stop myself from getting into trouble in the first place. Okay. Is this somebody and you know? It doesn't matter. I'm sorry. Is this someone you know? My other question was, oh, I apologize. I'm asking, is this someone you know? This is a gentleman that I'm currently in a relationship with. How long? I have been in a relationship with him for one and a half years. How old are you? 29. How old is he? 34. What? So let me get this straight. You're 29. He's 34. And how did this conversation of you paying his debts come about? Who started it? He, he did. Damn. And how did this, how did you get into a conversation with him suggesting that you should pay his debts? Um, so he was investing back in Africa and at the time I think he used what? Of his credit cards and loans what? and um, what? wasn't what? able to pay it back. And he was trying to pay it by himself with his income. However, wait, uh, wait, wait, ma'am. Are you telling me that you got hit by the Prince of Zamunda? Oh, Lord. Baby girl, are you telling me that you got hit by Omi with a Hellcat? 
Is this seriously happening, y'all? Did she get hit by Hush Puppy? Who? What in the world is... Ma'am, where did you meet this dude? Where? Um, in California. Now, that don't tell me where you met him. Where? What website did you meet him on? It wasn't a website. I met him in person. Um, he was a friend to my brother, or he is a friend to my brother. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? This heifer met this dude at five guys, damn it. She met some dude at five guys, and now she's on my phone trying to spin this tall ass tail. How many children does he have? He doesn't have any kids. Okay, how would you knowledge. know the Princess Zamunda ain't gave you all the information from back in Zimbabwe? With what he says is he doesn't have um, any children. Yeah. How often does he go back to Africa? Um, he hasn't been back since 2021. What? Yeah. That's the thing y'all got to watch for is when they're making regular trips back over there every year or two. I got to visit the family. He means his family. In any case, ma'am, he... I got to do this. I have to do this. Okay? I have to do this. Being as nice as I can here. Y'all, she's she's trying to help me find religion is what she's trying to do here. She really, really is. I need you to do me a favor. I got a feeling I know what's causing this. Okay? Okay. Do you have any children? No, I do not. Okay. Where do you live at currently? What city? Uh, in Lakewood, Washington. Okay. I just sent you a text message. I'd like for you to. I received it. I'd like for you to send me a link to your Instagram. Okay. I have a feeling that this will get squared away relatively quickly. I have a feeling I know exactly what the issue is here, but first I need to confirm it before I go any further. You have entered dimension without sight nor sound. Um, A dimension of fast-talking charlatans and slow-thinking girls. A dimension where your ability to scam others moves at light speed. You have entered the Thought Zone. Yeah, there goes my damn monetization on this video, huh? There goes my damn thing on that one. All right, there you go. All right, couple things here first. Where are you people from? Don't lie. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Say that again. Where are you people from? Uh, Africa. There Kenya. you go. Baby, where in the hell is you? First of all, why in the hell are you looking like damn me battle angel Alita in one of these pictures? All right. Um, where is your daddy? Where is your father? I live with him and my mother. Your father met this Negro? Not in person. Yeah. Okay, so in other words, you she got Americanized real quick, didn't she? Over here in America, the chicks went around getting slept with, sleeping with dudes all over the damn place. Their fathers never meet these fellas. Hoes getting pregnant. Daddy meets the fella at the hospital while she's delivering. You got a whole man. You're living with your father, but your father ain't met him. You've been dating him now for over a year. Your father hasn't met him. Am I am I relaying the events correctly? Yes, you are. Auntie, chill. Damn. 
This is Kenya, y'all. Now, were you born in America or were you born in Kenya? Born in Kenya. Y'all, I'm gonna go to Africa. This say hello to Africa. They called up to that real quick, didn't they? Ma'am, why is you why is it you don't respect your father enough to make sure that your father meets the man you sleeping with? Why? Um, it isn't that I don't respect my father or that I haven't wanted this to happen. What you just described um, was me. disrespect. You talking about giving this man money and he's never met anybody in your family except you. He has met my mother and the rest of the family. My How did he meet was, your mom and not your dad? My dad was um, in Massachusetts working and he just this last month just um, came back and we oh, didn't that. Ma'am, your daddy been in Massachusetts for a year? He was. That's where we were living before we moved um, to okay. Washington. He's trying to get his green card together is what he's trying to do. Ma'am, listen, this is silliness. That man's not supposed to be... After all this time, you're supposed to have made sure he met your father. Because very clearly he got over on you and your mama. That's what males can do. Slick talking males can get over on the females. He's charming the hell out your mama. There's a difference. Your daddy, men look at each other completely differently. That's why another male can't get over on us like that. It's like, yeah, you got my daughter seeing stars and butterflies and got my wife bamboozled. You ain't going to be able to do that with me. I'm another male. I ain't trying to sleep with you. And I don't feel no chivalry. I, 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 my survival instincts are what are listening to you. And if my survival instincts pick up anything wrong, I'm going to be able to see it in a moment. So that's why males tend to avoid that if they can. So you have allowed him to have a relationship without any interaction with the protector or provider of your family. 29 years old now. And hasn't, in her mind, made it a requisite that this man must meet her father. Because just like if you had a son, you don't have any sons. But do you have any male siblings? I do. How many? Two. Have your brothers ever met a chick who was no damn good? Yes, they have. And did they ever meet a chick who was no good and you knew she was no good when she walked in the door? Not the door to my parents' house. Well, not I'm the ma'am, I'm just saying that when you when he when they unveiled this chick, when you first met her, first laying eyes on you like, oh, this isn't right. This doesn't end well. Has that ever happened? Yes, that has Yes, that has happened. Then let me ask you one question. If you were able to immediately tell that this woman that your brothers were interested in, that there was no way that this ends well, how is it that you could see it the first time you saw her, but they couldn't? I don't know. Of course you do. And the reason is because you're not trying to sleep with her. His interests in her are different from your interests in her. She ain't got nothing to give you. So you can see her as a person, not as a sex object or an object of desire. She hasn't played with your feelings. She's not appealing to anything in your life that might have been missing. You get to just see her as a person. Your brothers have a vested interest. So you see, that's what they see when they look at her. Let me give you all a very quick example of exactly what that means. For females, for example, when you all look at another female, you just think about, okay, well, how does she wear a dress or how does she speak? With men, we looking at other things and wondering what those do. So you see what I'm saying is that sounds a little crude, but I'm serious. We look at them in a utilitarian fashion and that can blind us if we're not being critically thinking, if we're not thinking critically. 
So when you look at the female in the dress, you see something different than what we generally see. So you're not wearing the same, you're not being influenced by the same factors. Well, guess what, little lady? Same thing with you. That dude come through the door, he's doing things with you your father ain't doing, I hope. He's influencing you in a way your father isn't. So in other words, yeah, your father sees him differently than you do. He's not emotionally invested. He didn't hear all the jive talk in the sales pitch. He can see this man for what he is. And if everything checks out, we go from there. But if it doesn't, and here's the other thing you won't want to hear, your father is also painfully aware of his daughter's character flaws. He's aware of where she's weak. He's aware of where she's gullible. He's aware of where she thinks with her heart, not her head. Because he raised you. And so if he sees somebody taking advantage of his daughter's weak spots, he will immediately be able to recognize that as well. Because he's seen you give it, he's seen it develop over the years. Mothers tend to coddle their children. Fathers are protective. So what I'm saying is you're denying yourself that ability. I don't know what the issues have been with your father, but it's always best to have a second set of eyes, particularly the ones that raised you. Denying yourself that, baby, you're a sitting duck for any fast-talking male who comes along. A sitting duck. And you found one. Now, what you have attempted to do is what a lot of immigrants do, not being diminishing. I'm just saying these are the facts. So you try to keep it African. I'm not going to demean that. But what I am saying is that when you see these crimes of affinity, they don't go looking for people outside their community. They go looking for people in it. Because they know you. So a chick who's uh, from America, descendants of the slaves are foundational. He wouldn't be so quick to do that because he's like, eh, they got their guard up. In your case, your guard was straight down because you were expecting him to deal with you in good faith. And that's exactly where things go wrong. So I can see the things you were depending on and I'm just telling you why it's not working. Most likely he played it like a fiddle with your mother. He probably saw that that's what she uh, prioritizes and values too. He knew exactly what to say to get her to drop her defenses. And that's how, after all this time, he's now trying to hit her daughter up. Now, I've been waiting to ask this. <sighs> Let me brace myself. How much did he hit you up for? Um, the, the first time I did give him $5,000. Damn! Oh, God. The, fir the first time. What did you give him the second and third time? Um, so every month. Every would... month? What? <laughs> Wait a minute. This, the rest of the story starts off as every month. There's no way been. this ends well. There's just no way that the rest of this ends well. But I'm going to let you finish this anyway. Um, so this hasn't been going on for the entire time we've been dating. This started do you in... Think, okay, I said I wasn't going to interrupt. I, just, I said I wasn't going to interrupt again. I got it. Do you think that that makes it better that you just said, well, it hasn't been going on the whole time? No. You know, if, if men cheating on women start the sentence started out there, I ain't been cheating on you the whole marriage. I mean, I've just been doing it. For, do you think that makes it better? Okay, fine. Go ahead. How, I just need to know, um, how much have you given him total? Uh, probably 15,000. Ah! More or less, it could be less, but yeah. No, I don't try to minimize it now. If she's copping to the 15, it's probably 20. <sighs> Ma'am. And you've only been dating him for a year.
Ma'am, you've only been dating him for a year. That's right. So his thug loving has blinded you to the point that in less than a year, and here's the thing, you're talking about paying his debts. It sounds like you already did. How much does he owe now? Uh, I think at the time in total, his debt was maybe over 50000 Cookie! That nigga just ate up your savings. <laughs> he just ate that up, y'all. He just ate it up. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't even lick her savings. He just went straight to munching. He just went straight to gobbling it down. And she didn't, She said, I think he owed 50, 50 and I put 15 on it. What was he doing for you that was worth $15,000? Just out of curiosity. Um, I don't know. Whoa, that's the wrong answer. What was he doing that had you saying, okay, I can empty my bank account to the tune of 15 G's? What was he doing? What kind of relationship did you all have that you felt comfortable enough to do that? Well, I could say he did take out a car note for me, but he was already in debt, so. He was already in debt and he took out a car note for you. He did. Okay, whose name was the car in? His his name. Why did you need him to why did you need him to go scam another dealership out of a car? He did it out of his own will. He didn't ask me, I didn't ask him. He just did it. No, he didn't. He agrees the skids. You thought him parking, baby, he probably he probably made one payment on that car and that was it. And then you saw, you were so dazzled by that that you just, the damn repo people been chasing him around like the U.S. Marshals. And you've been so dazzled by that, that that's what got you to loosen up. Oh, well, he got a car for me. No, he put a payment on one. So let's just get this straight. If he put a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars on that car and that got you to give him 10 times that amount that's a hell of a return on his investment after all why would he need money from you if he could actually afford that car You see, these are critical thinking skills your father would have done. Unless your father's a complete rube. But these are critical thinking skills that your father would have employed. Very quickly. These are things your mother might not have thought about or mentioned, but your father would have very quickly have understood to ask these questions I'm asking. It would have been very, very quick and easy for him to understand. That's my point. You've known this man for one year. You're off trying to navigate this relationship on your own. One more question. Are you willing to bet your life that you are the only female that he has spent any time with in the last year? Are you willing to bet your little life on it? I would say yes. I'd be willing to wager you're some kind of fool. I'd be willing to wager you're wrong about that. Even if you weren't, it doesn't make it a whole lot better, but I'm willing to wager no. Because he owes so much money, he would need two or three of y'all to get over on. He owes so much, he would need two or three of y'all to get over on. By the way, where where in Africa is he from originally? Same country. There you go. So those of you in the chat who were talking about Nigeria, I'm like, no, 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 no. I meant what I said, familial. 
These are crimes of affinity. So they come from one of these communities. The Somalians want to kick it with the Somalians. The Ethiopians want to kick it with the Ethiopians. The Nigerians want to kick it with the Nigerians. And the Kenyans want to kick it with the Kenyans. By the way, Kenya is one of them only fans havens. By the way, y'all, if you, in case you didn't know, I'm not saying you only fans. I'm just saying Kenya, Kenya is becoming the popping spot for only fans, by the way. So glad to see they're putting their internet service to good use. But my point is, yeah, I mean, you, you kind of set it makes it too easy to pull this kind of thing off. It makes it too easy. By the way, one last thing sounds rather self-serving, but it's true. If you've been fooling one of us, that wouldn't happen, by the way. But you already knew that. So I hope you've learned your lesson about the dangers of tribalism. I hope you've learned your lesson about that. This isn't the home country. If you do not adapt, adapt and evolve, you're just gonna set yourself up for this again because you have an innocence about you. You don't have that calculating look in your eyes. You look like a teenager, but you're not. You also look like you're naive. Men are looking at your face and they can see that. Now, what you're thinking is, well, that's a good thing. Well, in a perfect world, it is. But we're not in a perfect world now, are we? So in no. the world that we're actually in, when certain men see you, they see the same thing I see here. Only they don't think, wow, she looks, she doesn't look like she's been run through like that. What they see is meat. Yeah, I can turn this one out. She won't even see it coming. She doesn't have the life experience. She doesn't have the seasoning. She hasn't been screwed over by three or four different dudes yet. And she's not doing anything to protect herself from it. So they're going to step in and take advantage. He's looking around to see, oh, and she doesn't bring her. She got a father, but she keeps him away. Nigga, I'm running the tables. And that's exactly what he did. And I don't think he's the first one either. Is he? He actually is. I've never been comfortable to give believe, a man money. I don't believe that. I'm sure you done broke bread somewhere else. Maybe not to the tune of $15,000, but I'm, I'm sure you've been spending money unsolicited before. Whether it's dates, vacations, or whatever. I'm sure you don't, because you didn't just jump up and do this out of nowhere. You've been pri You have to prime for that somewhere. You have to prime for that. By the way, y'all been dating for a year. What is the nature of your relationship that you thought that this was a good investment or you thought this was a good way to spend your money? Um, He did ask for us to be exclusive and to see just each other. I have met his parents um, and his family. That means absolutely nothing. I want the young females today to get this through y'all's damn heads. Listen to me. It means absolutely nothing, nothing at all in the 21st century for a man to bring you to meet his parents, especially his mama. It means nothing. Nada, nit, nay, nine, zero. It means nothing. Niggas bring chicks to see the, it's gotten, and this was when I was even high school. They bring chicks by so often. She's like, you just the latest one, baby. He brings one by every year. It's like Christmas. He brings a new chick over here every year. And his mama be sitting there cheesing because as far as she's concerned, her son is fulfilling his biological duty to go out and subdue the earth. Why well, take a look at it. The chicks just love him. And in a mother's mind, well, I've done my job with my son. He's got plenty of female prospects. So I've, I've done my job. Yeah, there are plenty of moms out there that that's the way they see that kind of behavior. That you're not sacred and it's okay because he's in control. And I guess when he gets ready to settle down, he's certainly given himself plenty of options. Ladies, the older women in here know this. They had to learn it the hard damn way. For you young chicks, baby, that means, for the rest of your days, that means nothing. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. It used to mean something it no longer does. 
Now, the male coming to meet your father, uh, that's different. Well, Jason, why is that different? Let me explain to you why, Juliana. Because a father will kill over his daughter. A mother will not. Let's just cut through the bull jive and get to the bottom line. A father will kill over his daughter. Your mother will not. So when a male sits down with another male, we understand that, by the way, I don't know this dude. Your daddy could have been chopping off heads over there in Kenya. We don't know this cat. Your father might have did a 10-year bid before he became a refugee and got his way over here. We don't know where he came from. Everybody talks about Nelson Mandela and Winnie Mandela. Winnie Mandela was necklacing people for God's sake. Peace be upon her, by the way, because she was necklacing the right people. Can I say that on YouTube? I just did. <laughs> by the way, if anybody wants to know how I feel about Winnie Mandela, by and necklacing, by the way, just thought I'd throw it in there. She was doing God's work. But dear, we don't know your daddy. So as a man sitting down with your father, I got to think, okay, how am I going to play this? Because I don't know what's on this cat's mind. I don't know how he's built. I don't know how he's cut. Every male understands this. In the chat room, go Google it. Don't anybody tell them in the chat room, go Google it. That's what you got Google for. Let's not do that. Google is your friend, your pal, your lifeline. But ma'am, that's the reason why you don't do that. No, I went to go meet his family. All right, how'd that turn out? So, just pro tip for the future. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Except when the male meets your father. But you girls, baby, they bring y'all around like, like Halloween candy every year. You're just the latest one. And they will never tell you about the others, by the way. Mama is sitting there right there keeping the code of silence with him. She's going to help him get over on you. And that's exactly what happened with you now, isn't it? Nobody even warned you. You think that they don't know that that's what their son does? He's 34 years old. You think they don't know that's what he does? Do you really think that? Do you really think his family doesn't know who and what he is? Hmm. But he's their bloodline, so they got to live with him. They don't have to live with you, even if they know he's messing you over. It's a dirty ass game. But they know what they raised. This is full circle. Your father knows what he raised too. Complete with your weaknesses and deficiencies. Well, guess what? They, they know what they raised. They know what they raised. That's the point. Did you get that? I did. So, <clears throat> going forward, I wouldn't give him a dime. You shouldn't have given him what you did. Did he talk to you or address a payment plan of any kind? It's not going to happen. But... Uh, no. no. Okay. Well, there goes that. So what was your intention after you gave him the money, by the way? What, what, was, what was supposed to happen next? I mean, I want to say that he has said that he would marry me, but from listening to you, that is not enough. Um, just saying it doesn't mean anything. And so. That is very true. Okay. Well, he, he basically gave you the gas her head up pack. That's what he did. So he said it was necessary to gas your head up. Oh, baby, we're going to get married. We're going to be forever, forever. Okay, there you go. Everything you wanted to hear, what he saw was you were emotionally vulnerable. 
And I think that's a very good thing in many ways. I think it's a very sweet thing, but you are not qualified to be able to discern which men are safe to do that with. You've clearly proven you're not. And that's going to be a hard pill to swallow because I don't want to tell my folks. Yes, just keep doing what you 90 do. seconds. Just keep this up. Keep relying on your instincts about men. And clearly your instincts are not reliable. I'm not saying that to be degrading. I'm saying your instincts are not reliable. That you walked off into this like this. Your instincts are not reliable. You need a second set of eyes. You need a second set of ears. And I ain't talking about your mama either. You need somebody else who is not going to give in to the wiles of a man or be impressed by that. Your father, your brother's. You need that. And then whatever their determination is, you need to listen. Whatever they determine, you need to listen. And that'll be hard for you because you're like, ooh, he tall and handsome and he's a good look for me. And they can see this fella is playing my sister like a fiddle. When your brothers were younger, you can say that they're bratty and they're in my business. Now they have an objective eye that you don't. Just like you did for those females. Well, she's just my sister. She don't know nothing. She's, be- yeah, they probably would have been a little bit better off listening to you, huh? Just saying. Ten seconds. Hopefully, blog talk does not cut us off here. But what I will say is, yeah, don't know. Um, no, we're not. We're not. We're not giving out any more freebies. We're not doing that. We're not doing that anymore. We're not handing any more free money. If the fella doesn't come to you with his finances in order, get a fellow whose finances are in order specifically to avoid this kind of thing. After all, if he's not competent and good with his finances, how is he going to make you good with yours? How? Jason, how much money should a man request from me? None. Not a dime. None. How is he going to be your financial leader and he's taking money from you? That's not a leader. Recognize when somebody's playing you. Furthermore, if I ever did have an exception to that, you'd have to be married to him for it. And that's not him. So recognize that. That's the recognize with you. By the way, how much money did you have in the bank when you started this ill-advised economic adventure? Uh, I want to say $10,000. So in other words, she spent everything she had and then went back and spent some more. I only spent half of what I had in my savings and then everything else I've given him is... As I said, so she spent what she had and then as she got more, she couldn't even replenish what she had because as she got it replenished, she went and gave it to him again. But you see, he's giving, he's he's laying down that, that Kenyan loving and she's just like, okay, this is a good look and she doesn't have much life experience and he wouldn't do me wrong like that. And what you're telling me right now is, by the way, there's no plan and no intention on his part to pay you back. So in other words, if he doesn't marry you, this is just a loss. Here's my problem. Even if he does, it's still a loss. Because you can't rely on that now, can you? No, cannot. So, no, don't give him another dime. Matter of fact, you need to be talking to him about how he's going to pay you. Although I'm curious, what are these debts that he had? Uh, He says they're credit card debts. Uh, My other question to you when I asked the question would have been, you know, is a woman supposed to help a man pay his debt? And if so, is she supposed to know how he got himself in this kind of debt? Okay, well, first of all, you don't give anybody, if anybody asks you for money, you're supposed to know everything. You're supposed to know it as well as you know your own. You're supposed to know the circumstances and everything. They don't have any closed books. When you want money from the bank, you don't have any closed books. The bank wants to take a look at anything and everything they want to see. As far back as they want to see it. So you don't, you don't have a right to privacy when you ask somebody for money. 
So if you're not 100% certain of what you're doing, no, you don't do it. But first of all, you don't do it. Listen, to all my young folk out there, we have a saying. If you want your family and your friends to remain your family and your friends, do not give them money. If you do it, give it to them. But don't loan your family and your friends money if you intend for them to remain your family and your friends. Don't loan them money. If you do it, you better just give it to them. But don't ever loan your family or your friends money. The single biggest issue of family members falling out and attorneys and police, by the way, attorneys and police will tell you this. The single biggest thing that makes families fall out is money. That breaks families. Uncle Uncle Joe filling on the nieces didn't break the family, but not paying back the hundred dollars did. So you're, you're learning some lessons early. Hopefully you learn them early. Baby, you've given out your last loan. Loan, gift, whatever the hell you thought you were doing. I don't think you're happy with any of it. No, man, don't do this again. You help other people get their finances together. You don't become the bank. Because it doesn't end well, it can't. You're taking all the risk. Once you gave him that money, there was no incentive and no you had no leverage to make sure he gave it back. By the way, was the intention for him to give it back? Uh, he did say that once he stabilized, he was... Once he's um, stable. So in other words, you gave him money and he gave you an IOU. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. So, Jason, I have a question that I think after listening to you, it would really be a dumb question, but I would still like to ask. Yeah, you better better ask all your questions now because you haven't been talking to your father, and I don't like the fact that you don't respect your father enough to ask this, and I'm pretty sure he could probably answer a lot of these himself, so you need to start talking to him but yeah go ahead and ask me so i can soften you up um so this wouldn't be defined as investing in a man hell what (laughs) god y'all do you hear this woman on this phone still trying to rationalize this bull jive do you all hear this auntie chill so Jason, so what you saying is, is this ain't an investment? Damn. After all of that, she's this is what I mean. This is why your daddy needs to be there. Oh, so Jason, like, she's trying to rationalize this to me. So it's not an investment, ma'am. This was called a giveaway. This is called a giveaway. Come on, baby. You five years younger than him. Come on now. He played the game smooth as hell. He couldn't wait around no three or four years. He couldn't wait around three or four years. He had to get that took care of now. So as soon as he got in the door, that's it. And here's the thing. You're disposable. You're not going to like this next part, but I'm going to lay it on you anyway. How long were you two together before you became intimate? And don't lie to me. Tell the truth. Because I cannot help you if you lie to me. A month. Do you not think that that sent a very clear signal to him? Um, Well, after listening to you, I would say it should have. She slept with him after a month. How long after you met him did you first start giving him money? Exactly a year. How long after you met him did did he park that car in front of your place? Uh, Nine months. So most likely his credit card debts are only a year or two old. 
Wondering why he wants to pay them off, though. That's the thing I'm curious about. I wonder why he wants to pay it. I'm not sure just yet, but there's he's got an angle that he's working for why he wants to pay those things down. Or should I say, he claims he has credit card debts. Have you actually confirmed it? Um, the only thing that he sent to me is a screenshot from a credit report. No, 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 no. What I would want to see is the letters in the mail that are supposed to be showing up. By the way, how old are these debts? Uh, 20, 2020 to 20, I would say since, 20 to now. Since the pandemic, he's one of those people. Okay, the only thing you could do is go to a site like annualcreditreport.com or Credit Karma, though annualcreditreport.com is the best place to go because it gives you copies of your credit reports. You could go there and go take a look at that. I would not trust screenshots. I would only trust going to the website itself. At this point, it really doesn't matter because here's the problem. Now you've given him the money. And you said nine months. Well, you said you gave it to him a year later. Because you said a year later. Because yeah. you said you've only been dating for a year. When did you meet him? I met. I met him last year, April. Okay, so it's been a little over a year, actually. Actually, going on a year and a half. It's been going on eighteen months now. So, with that being the case, yeah, like I say, he's been laying up with you, and he saw that you were. He saw that you moved quickly. So you responded, he saw that you responded to his advances quickly. And what I'm saying is you literally gave him every sign in the world that this is going to be an easy layup. This is going to be a easy, this is going to be easy money. She thinks she's on top of it and she's, all she's sending you is every sign that this is going to be an easy mark. And it was, he just needs to wait. And a year later, She's throwing money at him and doesn't even know what she's throwing it for. So now he's telling himself that he's got magic sex powers. You got this little 29 year old chick who's just doing the most. So that's where it's at now. By the way, where's the car? Uh, I have it. That's are what you, I drive. Are you in it now? Yes, I am. Have you confirmed that that car is still got? Is that car is still being paid for? Yes, I have. How is it that he's paying for the car, and yet he needs you to foot him money for his credit card bills? Well, I guess with the same money that I provide or I don't know. Wouldn't that be a damn shame if he's paying for the car with the money that you gave him? Wouldn't that be a son of a dog if he's paying the car note with the money that you gave him? Now, I don't really want to go into the next thing, which is, by the way, I wonder if you're the only female he's spending your money on. Now, that's where things get ugly. Is if you haven't seen him for two or three days, if there's just certain days of the week that you can't really, he can't come see you in person. And I just wonder, by the way, wouldn't that be a son of a gun? Not only if he's paying for the car she's driving around with her money, but what if there's another chick? You, you catch him at the mall buying her some shoes or some drawers? Man, I hope it's not that far along. I hope it isn't. But I am saying at this point right now, there's nothing that would protect you from it. There isn't anything that would stop it. So, By the way, I'm not going to say what it is. I'm not going to say what it is. Actually, I should say what it is. What brand of car is that? It's a Lexus ES. What year? Uh, 
2018. And why did you need another, why did you need a new car? Like I said, he did this without asking me or without me asking him. So I would say. Okay, mm, did you have a car? Did qualified. you have a car already? I did. Why did you need a second one? Um, I had traveled to California for work and my mom drove my car and it was totaled. Okay, so uh, ma'am, do you hear yourself right now? This isn't very good. You said you had another car. If your car got totaled, then you didn't have one. Right, I was just trying to explain why I needed a car. Okay, I just said, did you need one? You said no. I apologize. I wonder how. I wonder how she ended up in this situation, everyone. I wonder how. I wonder. In any case, no, you didn't have a car, and you're saying that he went and bought you a new one. Or he bought you another one. Right. Nine months after meeting you and bedding you, he's gone off on his own recognizance and bought a car. And you're saying you never gave him a dime before that. No, I had never given him money. And then a couple of months after he presents that car, now he hits you up for credit cards. He hits you up to assist him with his debts. That was a yes or no question. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Nine yes. months after you two get together, he buys you a car. And a couple of months after he does that car, now he hits you up to say, you know what? You sure could help me with my credit card debts. That's what happened. Now, I've bought cars for females also. When I was young and not so bright, I gave them the money and they purchased the cars themselves. I'm older and smarter now. And the quality of females I deal with, I like to think, is a bit better than it was when I was a kid. Um, the, only re the only reason the cars are in my name is because of the liability. They're too expensive now. But also, they're company cars. So, they're part of the company. And I have absolutely no problem, even if a female wants to require more than just my word on it, I can give her tangible things that show... As long as you are my woman and you are with me, you've got that car. Period, point blank, in the discussion. We're not the little children over here. So as long as you are my woman, you got that. This guy's got a car with you in his name. I don't know if I can vouch for his integrity. Not based on what I've seen. So in other words, you're driving around with a car right now that is in his name, and that's what he used to leverage for you to give him money. By the way, how much did he put down in that car? I guess $5,000. <laughs> how do you know that? I'm sorry? How do you know that? He did send me um, a picture of the loan approval letter and the down payment and the, I think the final payment he made when he purchased the car. Okay, is he, but he's financing the car? He is. Okay, so let me get this straight. According to you, and by the way, I, I'm not sure I believe anything this guy would say or present, but by the way, you're saying that he spent $5,000 to get that car. I'm wondering if the $5,000 came from his credit cards or not. I wonder the down payment. I wonder where the money came from. And by the way, couldn't help but notice this guy's very good for screenshots. I mean, no paperwork. He's never shown you a piece of paper. Not physically. You starting to pick up a pattern here? 
That's why yeah. I said that's why I said with the credit report, you need to go to the website and take a look at it. This guy's very, very good for sending you screenshots. Not very good for sending money. What's the total value of that car? A 2018 ES? What's the total value of that? Now, I already know what it is. I'm just wondering what he told you it is. I actually didn't ask. All right, Inspector Clouseau. Because why would you want to find that out? Either way? Why would you want to know how much the car costs? Why would you even want to know that? This is... Makes no real sense when you think about it. Just roll on, girl. Just roll on. Ma'am. Okay. I'm just sitting here like, all right. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? In any case, y'all, she's out there. She's rolling. He claims he spent 5000 and then she immediately gives it to him. So he gave 5000 to the bank. And you reimbursed him. Is what you did. He gives 5000 to the bank and then you turned around and reimbursed him. And not only did you do that, she turns around and then gives him an additional 10000 Yeah, I'm just sitting around right now wondering how long till this car gets repoed. By the way, what is he driving? A Toyota Tundra. So he's driving the Toyota pickup truck and he got you a Lexus. Yeah. And, and yet he's asking for money from you to pay his debts. Where does he live? Who does he live with? He lives by himself. How can he afford to do that and can't afford to pay his own credit cards? I don't know. I think you do. The math doesn't math. This story doesn't hold up. It doesn't. He lives by himself. This story doesn't hold up. This story doesn't add up. There's no way that he can afford all of that and then can't afford to pay his credit cards. There's no way. Something here is not actually getting done. You're being given a story. Something here is not actually even getting done. Yeah, good question. You've been to his place? I have. For how long? Um, when I was working in California, we would spend time together every weekend. Where are you living and at now? Well, I'm in Washington. He still lives in California. So in other words, this is a long distance relationship. And that's correct. You're getting, you're seeming very deceptive on the phone, by the way. First, she was deceptive about the timeline of her car not being there. I have a car. Actually, I don't. Now she's, well, I live in Washington. She mentioned that before. I wanted to be sure about that. The reason why is because, so you've been acting as if you're able to keep an eye on him. You've been talking as if he couldn't be cheating on me and it couldn't be nobody else involved and he lives by himself. You don't even live in the same state with him. You're literally, and what part of California does he live in? You better not say Southern California. You better not say Southern California. Y'all, Southern Cal- this heifer is a two day drive. DJ, you just called her heifer. I damn sure did. With it, nigga. This heifer is a two day drive. I've driven from Washington to Los Angeles. The maps are outrageously deceptive. If she doesn't take a plane, it's going to take two days to drive down there. And remember, I'm an experienced driver. I'm super experienced. I thought going from Seattle to LA would be a breeze. Nigga, no. 
This is Jason Black telling you this. Driving from Seattle to LA, that's a haul. You're not going to do that in one day. And I'm experienced at this. You're not doing that in one day. Not unless you're on some drugs. That's a two-day haul humping it down there. That's a two-day haul. So if she's not getting on a plane, she's it's taking her days to go see him. Last time you went to go see him, how did you get there? He bought me a plane ticket. There you go. So in other words, he knew when you were coming and knew when you were leaving. How many days did you spend down there? Uh, a little over three weeks. And I this, and this heifer thinks she's the only one, y'all. When I asked her, by the way, do you are you willing to risk your life that he's not talking to other women? He lives in Southern California. When's the last time you saw him? Last month, he came to see me no, for no, two no. weeks. How many days? How many days has it been since you two saw each other last? Uh, one month. And so you're telling me that he saw you for two weeks. He lives in Southern California. He wants to borrow money from you to pay his credit cards. He bought you a Lexus and you believe that in the last month, Jason, he would never be with another female. He would not do that. You live all the way up there in Washington state. He lives in Southern California. And you've said with so much conviction, nope, he wouldn't do that, Jason. No, I don't think he, I would bet my life on it. You'd be a dead girl is what you'd be. You'd be every type of dead there is. But you already know this. What you're doing right now is trying to save face. You know full well that mathematically this does not add up. You know it doesn't. You know mathematically there's no way that everything you're saying can be right. Some of it can be, but not all of it. There's no way with what you told me that all of that can be correct. It can't be. It can't be, but you already know this. She's just having denial to face up to how bad it really is. She doesn't want to declare the whole business bankrupt, which is where that question about, so is this an investment? That's where that came from. She, she wants to save face and she's refusing to admit that the business is bankrupt. Cause then she would feel embarrassed to her family and her friends. And she'd have to tell them the whole ugly story, which is what she wants to avoid. She doesn't want to tell them how she really met him because she's not being totally honest with me. And she thinks I can't tell, but I can. So it's so damn obvious. She's not being honest about that. She's not being honest about the circumstances under which she got involved with him. She doesn't want to tell them that we was knocking boots within a couple of weeks. She said a month, which really means a couple of weeks. No, no, she's not being honest about that. She said a month. She really means a couple of weeks. Now, that's what that really means. That this guy didn't have to see her more than once or twice. And she was down to do the do. And she doesn't want to have to admit that. Because then everything else makes sense. Everything else makes sense after that. She was just enraptured and enchanted. And she was infatuated. And he saw it from a mile away. She doesn't want to have to explain that. That's why he's not on your social media. Because you actually do understand what's happened. You're just hoping that he's not really going to take advantage of this like that. You're really just hoping and hope is not a strategy. You've been foolish is what you've been. But that goes along with being young also. If you continue being foolish, that's not part of youth. That's just a character flaw. So I would, I would recommend we start being a little more honest with ourselves because hard-headed females refuse to admit when they're wrong. But if you refuse to admit when you're wrong, how can you ever learn to be correct? If I tell you that two plus two is four, I've shown you what is one plus one is two and two plus two is four. Let's walk this through. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. All right, how much is two plus two? Six. Because you refuse to admit that the first time you were wrong. If you refuse to admit that you're wrong, you're just going to repeat your mistakes. 
As the old saying goes, those who do not re learn from the lessons of history are doomed to repeat them. If you refuse to look this ugly thing in its eye and admit everything that you did wrong, if you won't do that, then how in the hell are you not going to repeat this? You never made peace with what you did wrong in the first place. You'll just tell yourself, I didn't do the wrong thing. I just could have done it better. And that's not what will happen. You'll just repeat it again. You'll be a different guy in a different city, in a different place, playing on a different part of your neuroses. And it'll happen over again. Only it may be worse next time. Females can only take so much of that before they start becoming somebody different. A type of female that men don't want to be around. And I would hate to see a situation where you allowed your arrogance and conceit to turn you into somebody who you keep letting guys do that because you refuse to admit you're wrong. And then eventually, now you start becoming a major wench. I'm not going to say the B word. But you start doing that as a defense mechanism. Well, guess what? Now you've allowed those guys to turn you into something that you could have avoided. Now, Mr. Right is going to avoid you because you let yourself get screwed off. Because you refuse to admit that you're wrong. And the, if you can do this young in life, you can avoid being stupid, really stupid later. Being stupid isn't the worst thing that can happen to you. Being unwilling to change is the worst thing that can happen. And right now, you're in the middle of that one. Don't let your embarrassment turn you into a hard head who can't learn. I was young and stupid too. I'm not some mystical, magical Maharaji. Anybody who tells you that is a damn liar. I was in my 20s, y'all know, size 6 waist, size 12 ass. And I spent a bunch of money there too. She didn't finesse me, she didn't anything, but I shouldn't have done it. And I had an accountant who told me what not to do and I didn't want to hear it. I wanted that man to tell me that I could have it all. I wanted him to tell me I could afford it. And when he told me, you cannot do this, I just got up and left. Six months later, I was bankrupt. And it took the better part of a decade to rectify that. And what I'm saying is that's what happens when we're hard-headed and will not listen. Sometimes we'll walk ourselves into things we simply can't get out of. It doesn't matter what our intentions were. It doesn't matter if there's people out there with axes. It doesn't matter. You're in charge of limiting your exposure. Right now, you're not doing that. You're all the way up there in Washington with a car. By the way, was that car registered in Washington? No. Is that car driving around with California plates? It is. Girl, you don't see how stupid this sounds with you trying to assure me that this dude got your back. You literally have no idea what the financial condition of that car is, which is what I've been saying the whole time while you're trying to tell me you do. No, you don't. You have no idea if he's finished making payments on that car. If the insurance, because the insurance company would be the first one to know, if he doesn't pay the insurance, if he either lapses on the car note or the insurance, the DMV is going to be sending notices to the address for the car. According to you, that's his address. So in other words, the insurance could elapse, the car could be in full repossession, and you wouldn't know. In the chat room, you all are correct because she's taken the car across state lines. And Mr. Omi and the Hellcat will just be like, well, you know, it's no big deal because that's what the immigrant scammers do. And he'll be like, well, it's a civil matter, not a, not a criminal one. That's a serious game to be playing. Only he's not sitting with the car. You are. And he's been hitting you up over and over again for more money. He's allegedly spent 5000 He got that back from you. Then he got 10000 I estimate that car should cost somewhere around twenty to twenty five thousand. How am I doing? I mean, I would say you're right, given that I don't know how much. Given it that is you for. don't know how I, you, you told me before you did see what it was. Little girl, you you in honesty have a bit of a problem. 
You and on, you and that. honesty are having some issues. I suggest you I get those. That I, I suggest you get those worked out. You and honesty are having some issues. You claim that you looked. You claim he sent you a screenshot of what he was paying for it. And then if that is true, then that's right. right. Then if that is tr- and right. what and what the down payment was. That part of the notice, that part of the letter from the bank should have said what the down payment was and the payoff. And by the way, please remember you're recorded. So you mentioned that. I did. That would have been there. Now you're claiming you don't know. You and honesty are having some issues here. Stop trying to defend yourself. You're not fooling me or anybody else. Stop it. Stop it while you still can. Before you become 32 and you'll meet somebody much worse. And you will walk off into that one only. This one will get you pregnant because you're older and you'll be a little slicker and a little savvier. The next one will have to get you pregnant to make sure that you buy into your narcissism enough and don't leave. Yes, there are plenty of men who get chicks pregnant just to handcuff them. And you will walk right off into it just to save face. And the men will see that coming too, just like I did. And I haven't been talking to you for a year and I saw all of it. Stop it while you still can. You don't know the condition of that car. You don't know the condition of the insurance. You don't know the condition of the payments to the bank. You don't know if that car is hot. You don't know if the license and registration, I mean, if the registration has been revoked because you haven't done, because you haven't paid to the uh, dealership. You don't know what that car's condition is. And it's not even a car in Washington state. So literally speaking, you're actually breaking the law. I'm pretty sure Washington is like the other states and that you're supposed to register the car in Washington if the car has been there more than 30 days. That's usually what states do, even with those Montana license plates. Montana's about the only one that doesn't give you hell over that. Yeah, folks go buy the cars in Montana place and then bring them to Atlanta. Now Georgia is cracking down on folks who do that little bull jive with the Atlanta plates, with the Montana plates, but that's for everything. So yeah, I'm pretty sure Washington probably has a similar law You've been rolling around Washington and it's like, okay, she hasn't gotten pulled over. It's unlikely that you will. But what I'm saying is you're far enough away that you have no earthly idea what the real status of that car is. If he has stopped making payments on it, he's just going to be getting letters and notices. Well, they want the car back. Well, they can't get it and they can't repos- They can't grab his Tundra as a substitute for the car. So his car is safe. And if they come, they send the repo man by the house, he's not going to find the Lexus. And that's the only thing he's legally able to get. Well, the Lexus is in another state and the, neither the bank nor the dealership know. Well, what about his credit? I thought you said his credit was already jacked up. He had to get money from you. Oh, well, throw that on the lot. Throw that on the pile with the rest of the debts. That's the part that concerns me. I don't like any of this. No, you shouldn't give another dime. You need to be a lot more honest with yourself about exactly what you got yourself into so that we do not repeat this again. You need to have a talk with him specifically about, yeah, this is all great and everything. I need to verify some things. And you also need to have this I'm I'm not very cool on what I'm hearing here, but yeah, I'm going to, I'll pay you back when I get a chance. Well, how is he paying for the car? If he can't pay you back $5,000, by the way, what is the monthly note in that car? $350. That's not a lot. How many, what's the term? How many years are you paying this? So that's the information that he hasn't disclosed. So he hasn't told you how long the term of the loan is, but she says she looked at the loan papers and didn't look at them very good enough. That all really matters, you know. 
if he put 5,000 down, like I say, it might be 60 months, five years. It might be that. But I don't know. It depends on the interest. I've got questions about it. I don't have questions about your ability to get repaid. That's not going to happen. If he's he's making $350 a month payments and you're just assuming that. But he didn't have lump he didn't have a lump sum before. How is he supposed to get it now? He hasn't been able to get together a lump sum for the credit card companies allegedly in the last 3 years. So how is he going to get a lump sum for you now? Furthermore, did you ask how it is that he came up with $5,000 lump sum to pay on that car but has not had $5,000 lump sum to pay you back? No, I didn't ask. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. Stop being deceitful to yourself. You're not fooling me. Um, yeah, none of that makes sense. So he mystically can come up with money to get that car for you. Can't get it from anywhere else for himself. So he had $5,000 for you, but doesn't have $5,000 for himself. Basically is what you're saying. So he had $5,000 allegedly to spend for you, but does not have $5,000 to spend for himself. Correct? Yeah. And now after he allegedly spent the $5,000 on you, ever since then, it's been no money out, all money in for him. That was the last time he spent anything on you. And ever since then, it's been a pipeline of money coming from you to him. That's correct. And he didn't wait a year to get that kicking off. He did that a couple months later. And you haven't been able to get a dime out of him since. But he was able to get $5,000 allegedly to pay down on this car. Why does he go get your money back from the place he got the $5,000? What does he do for a living? What do I do for a living? Him, him, him. What does he do for a living? Um, he's a mechanical engineer. How do you know that? From what he says. So she hasn't been able to confirm what he does for a living. She hasn't been able to confirm his finances. She has not been able to confirm the loan paperwork, the car paperwork, the bill of sale, the insurance, the registration. She doesn't even know where the $5,000 came from to put down on this car that she's currently zooming around Washington State in. I forget off the top of my head, does California have license plate registration stickers? It does. When's that one set to expire? Uh, he just renewed them and put them in the mail. They were set to expire. He renewed them and put They're them in the all... mail. Did you receive them? I haven't received them yet. Do you notice how that's pretty much the same answer you give me to everything I ask about this guy? Every time we look for paperwork, give us hard copy. Every time we talk about that, you notice how your answer is always consistently, yeah, about that hard copy thing. Everything is screenshots and over the phone and take his word for it. No documentation whatsoever. By the way, it's already September. The, the ta those stickers expired in August and it's September. Uh, August 6th. Ma'am, you, you know he could sh August 6th. We're going on September 6th now. 20, 26th. 
August 26th. Okay, we're going on September. He could have gone to the DMV and gotten those taken care of. It's been over a week. It's been a week now. That's since the 26th, but he could have gone to go get that taken care of before the 26th. Why didn't he? And by the way, how long have you had that car again? Since February. February. Okay, you've had the car now for six months. Yeah, six to seven months. Okay. Uh, how is it the inspection stickers, or how is it the license plate sticker is already expired then? You didn't get new stickers when I'm from Louisiana. You didn't get new stickers when you got the car registered. Where's that license plate when from? When the car was when the car was registered, I did get the stickers, and the stickers are on the plate. The okay. The newest stickers is I haven't received. You said you got the stickers when you first got the car, so the stickers are not good for a year. Apparently not. This doesn't sound right. This that doesn't say no, ma'am. The stickers will be good for a year. No. No. I was a car dealer. No. Not at all. No. Don't let don't let him getting you off in some mess sit up here and get you hemmed up on something. Don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. In the chat room, you're right. I mean, she will have a paper tag. She's talking like she had a license plate because I said license plate and I've been saying license plate. Have you been driving around with paper tags all this time? No, it has license plates. Okay. When you got your license plate, they're supposed to give you the, the, the sticker for the registration. So it'll be a year, ma'am. Not six months. California is a mess. Could you imagine everybody having to get their stickers every six months? California be a bigger mess than it already is. So I don't know where you got those stickers from. You know where you got them from. And a sticker isn't good for six months. It's not the way that works. Now, did you actually get those stickers or did he get them? I have the registration here. So. Okay. You think that's going to help you at this point? Did you get those stickers or did he get them? He got them and mailed them to me. Well, they were mailed to me, yes. No, I'm talking about the stickers you got back in February. He did. That's what he mailed to me. Oh, and so, I have the... So he acquired, have, the, so he acquired the six-month stickers in February. Right. I have the registration here. Uh -huh. um, when does it say it your says, registration expires? They were... It says they expire August 26th. Okay. How did you buy the car in February and the registration expires on the 26th of August? I don't know. That literally makes no sense if the car has been transferred to your name. You would have to get a new license plate. So there's no way in the world it has a it new license plate, here, the same thing. It says here the registration card is... Expires August 26, 2023. I've got all kinds of questions about what's happening there. None of that sounds good. I don't live in California, but California's DMV system would be unworkable if this was the way things had to be done like this. You got the car in February. You're claiming you got a six month registration. That car was new to you. When you got it registered, the clock's supposed to start running from February. But you're telling me that, oh, it's only good for six months? What, yeah, that's, um, when, what date does it say that the registra the car was registered in? It says registration card valid from August 26th. 2022 to August 26, 2023, but the, they were issued in February 16th, 2023. Okay. So this registration is a year old. According to this letter that I have. Uh-huh. 
Little girl, you're going to let that guy get you in all kinds of trouble. I'm just going to say that right now. You're going to let him get you in all kinds of trouble. This isn't exciting. It isn't fun. He's going to get you in all kinds of trouble. So, yeah. Yeah. Do yourself a favor. Don't give him another dime. Try to get your money back if you can. Talk to your parents. Talk to your mom, whatever the case may be. Try to get your money back if you can. By the way, the money that you gave him, how did you give it to him? I send it to him, um, Zell. Well, hopefully you have some documentation of that. You can go see my friend Joe, Joe, Joe Brown. But, uh, yeah, keep your documentation and what not, and hopefully maybe he'll pay you some of it back. But, uh, no, I don't recommend that you give him another dime. I also recommend that you figure out something else to do about transportation because I don't like a single thing I've heard about that car. Not even one. Okay. Please give me a call back in 90 days. I would like to see how this is gone. Okay. Talk to your dad. Tell him everything that you've told me. Don't hide anything. Tell your father everything so he can help you. He will be angry. He will be upset. He's going to bounce off the damn walls, and he should. And then he's going to calm down, and he's going to come up with something practical. Unless he's a goofball, too. But uh, stop trying to avoid and circumvent your father. Give him a chance. Give him a chance to do something competent. Because clearly you're not handling this properly. Stop trying to think that he's stupid because it'd be different if you were over here knocking out the park and brilliant, but you're not. Give your father a chance to show what he can do first. Give him a chance. Can you try that? Yes, I can. I should. I want to hear back from you in 90 days. Okay. Well, thank you. Kids, what the hell's the matter with these kids today? Jason, that was a long call. That needed to be. That needed to be a long one there. Wanted to make sure we dissected everything because I don't want to tell her that something's wrong with this guy if she is misinterpreting it or if she's not giving me the information correctly. You also notice I didn't tell her to break up with him. Notice I didn't say that either. Maybe her dad will tell her. But um, I didn't say that either. But I wanted to make sure that he wasn't being mischaracterized and that we weren't misunderstanding things. I've only got her version of the story. But yeah, everything from her is he said, he said, he said, here's a car. He said, here's the stickers. He said, here's the money. He said, I got debts. He said, here's a screenshot. And everything, she states away and just taking his word on everything. And that's what I mean by, yeah, he saw you would do that. And she ain't even laying up with him on a daily basis. She just sees him whenever she can. Hell, she probably got somebody up there in Washington. Yeah, he's he's a Kenyan down there in Los Angeles, but he's being completely faithful to her, don't you know? Let me get caller from area code 630. You're on live with the business. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, Jason. This is uh, Nick from Chicago by way of Houston. All right, Nick from Chicago, what's on your mind? Yeah, uh, first things first, uh, with that last call, uh, it kind of gives me pause to think about uh, how many of these women out here, and while there are a lot of comments that say, oh, I would never do that, man, these women know they lay up with these cookies and uh, other guys, and they they fund them. They may not be doing this 5000 uh $10,000 drop a bag at once, but over time, they are funding and feeding these dudes. I see it all the time. These dudes, these homosexuals that are out here, and it's women dogpiling them. I mean, one of my sisters was dealing with that guy. I see this guy. He's like, hey, what's up, Nick? He sees me. And 
he's dealing with three other people, but nothing gets through uh, to them. So hopefully this uh, uh, woman actually listens. But, yeah, they do it in different ways. They don't do it like this guy, but they do it in different ways. But as far as uh, what you were saying earlier about the uh, average man and whatnot, so I had decided to take a slightly different turn um, back in the end of May, early June, and to change up some of the things that I'm doing as I'm waiting for crypto and all of that stuff to turn around and uh, other business that I'm doing, I decided to work in a factory uh, so that I can learn. The feds are the it. feds are getting ready to crack down. Actually, they've already sent notices to crack down on Ethereum. For those of you who didn't oh, know yeah. this, by the way, for all the folks, all the Bitcoin bros and everybody for years been trying to educate me about bit, telling me and Warren Buffett that we didn't know we were talking about. Now the SEC is coming for Ethereum. For those of you who didn't know, the SEC is coming for Ethereum now. So all the Bitcoin bros, all I can say is I tried to tell you. I said it for you. We got this, Jason. Like, okay. Hope that works out for you, Nick. But go ahead. Oh, I'm not worried about it. So, <laughs> I would, I would, uh, I wouldn't the, uh, either. I wouldn't either, brother. You know, when the world's burning down, just get on the beach with a margarita, and and, and, and just <laughs> watch watch the flames, and just say, "Hey, we cool over here, this, brother." Why, why stress? What me worry? What yeah, me worry? I got my cigar sunglasses. I'm ready. I do this. I do the same. I, I wish uh, I could have done that 20 years ago when I was watching things go bad for me. I should have just, that's what I really should have done. I don't drink alcohol, but I should have just got out there on the front lawn with a lawn chair and a Sprite and just <laughs> wait for the tow trucks to show up and the landlord. To, that's what I should have done then. Just, I should have been stressing so much. I should have just got on the front porch with a taco bag, a taco bell and just wait for them to show up. All right. So what'd you have in mind? Yeah, so I decided to uh, uh, work in a factory so that I can learn the layout. Because I remember what you said, and it really struck me. As the, as soon as you said that um, some months back or maybe it was a half a year ago, you were like the employer is uh, paying you to basically do their job for them. They're paying you to run their business. So when I heard that, I my mind subconsciously and consciously, I was thinking about other things. And, you know, me being an investor – I wanted to open up a factory, but I realized I don't know a thing about it. So as I've got into the factory, I've learned where the suppliers are, kind of cut in front. I'm playing dumb. I won't say too much on the phone. But basically, uh, for anybody else listening, it has been wonderful. And I made a few connections and just stacking up more so that when I decide to pull the trigger and uh, form any partners that I need to do, I know how to do it. So I wanted to call in with that because uh, I tried to push this idea with some people that I knew that I trusted in a uh, business and maybe not some business people. And they're saying it's crazy or they want to stay where they're at. And I'm looking at this, looking forward and saying, look, U.S. dollar might drop, might not drop. But one thing that's going to be here is that people are going to need to uh, ship things out. Okay, the truck drivers are doing what they're doing, but we need people to assemble things whether that's in the U.S., whether that's in Mexico, whether that's on the continent of Africa. So I'm looking at where the trend is going, and I'm getting in front of it. Well, definitely, like I say, I mean, stay innovating, stay in front of it. Uh, please keep us uh, – well, let me know how it works out, of course, obviously, because results matter more than anything. Hype, yeah. speculation, that's all great and everything. At the end of the day, at the bank, we count results. So definitely, if you get results from that, give me a holler. Let me know. Definitely, for sure. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Yeah, y'all, what Nick say? I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this Bitcoin drop shipping. All right. So, like I said, he stay hustling. He stay hustling. He stays hustling. Uh... Facts, figures, numbers, some of its brutal reality. I'm just letting you know I'm just the messenger. Just the messenger. Keep your eyes and your ears open here. Who is Mr. Average? Mr. Average is the guy that that woman expects to go and purchase her a G-Wagon. You're Mr. Average. You're Mr. Average in an extraordinary world. 
and yesterday's extraordinary is today's average. Yeah, I mean that. Yesterday's extraordinary is today's average. You don't even want to know what tomorrow is. You don't even want to know how that works. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up here tonight. I want to thank all of you for tuning in the nice program. Big shout out to everyone who has contributed to the nice program on PayPal, Cash App, Super Chat, Venmo. Let me go ahead and address that. We live in a day and age and an era where folks are out here and stuff and their audiences don't really support what they do. Not really. This is why YouTube demonetizing channels scares them. I've never worried about demonetization because when people rock with you for real and fool with you for real, you just accept that, hey, we just use YouTube for broadcasting and distributing to a large audience. YouTube's monetary policy is too hostile. So I want to send a big shout out to everyone who has done more than just lip service. You supported what we do. I know you said don't say anything, but no, no. I, I want to send a shout out here to, to no. I don't even know who the hell no is actually. But I want to send a shout out to no. Big shout out to know about that and everybody else here who supports what we do. You know, those kind of things help. It's just, it's just helpful to know that you're out there doing that. We do our thing here because we are the only channel that has real. You all tell me in the last five years, a conversation like we just heard a 29 year old chick calling me up and telling me that. And I'm not telling her, well, call me back when you're older. No, she needs to know this now. I'm not sitting up here saying that. Folks call me up with random things and whatnot. I try to take advantage of my opportunities to speak to them. So we do something unique here. We do something different here. It's not just about clowning folks and being entertaining. Some, some of the things that you hear are going to be harsh. And what I mean harsh is that it's going to be unpleasant for you to hear the truth like that. And it's like, oh, can you sugarcoat it for me? No, can't do that because sugarcoating is what got you where you are. It's also rare to hear adults speaking about these things from a position of authority and a position of experience. That doesn't usually happen. It's usually something else. So I'm glad that you all, that I have your support. I'm glad that I have that. So I just want to take a moment here to thank all of you for doing that while other people are wringing their hands and worried and whatnot. I've never been worried about that because y'all fool with me for real. So I've always appreciated that. If you are new here to the business, welcome to the program that all your favorite YouTubers love to hate watch. Click that red subscribe button. Click that yellow notification bell. Join us each and every time that we're here. If you haven't joined our patron, the link is in the description. You definitely want to go ahead and check that out as well. And you also want to make sure that you stay subscribed to the channel. Check to make sure YouTube has not unsubscribed you. We'll be doing patron here tomorrow at 12 noon. You're welcome to join us. And this concludes this broadcast of the business. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, Mr. Jason Black. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, handle your business or the California DMV will handle you.